Like, the show's real brilliance is brought to life by the white trash. The I mean, white tra- the, the spousal abuse stuff, mm-hmm. which was just so consistent. Yeah. Well, are you going to keep them there forever? Can I bail them out? Like, miss, you should go to Didn't a hospital. Didn't he just punch you? You should go to a hospital. He goes, I should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast Studio. I left quarantine, everybody. I left quarantine. I left the place I was staying deep in the woods in the basement of a cabin of a family that took me in. And I'm back in New York, back in New York City. The place where they invented staying up all night. The city that invented pizza. The city that invented acting. The city that invented comedy. The city that invented bragging about other people's shit that you had nothing to do with inventing. New York City, Manhattan. I'm here, Skeptic Tank Studios. And I'm going to give you, before we start, today's episode is with Big J. Okerson. I'm just letting you know that right now. It's with Big J. Okerson, and it's about cops. It's a serious subject. It's about cops. But before we get to that, I'm going to take you on a little tour of the studio. How about that? Okay? All of it from this fucking beautiful artwork by Ted Munns. If you want to hire him, Ted Munns Mosaic. The art by John Sayer. Um, This whole fucking setup. All we got to hear offer you at at Skeptic Tank Studios. All the different things we're going to be doing. Uh, If you're listening on audio, you might get left behind a little on this, but generally, don't worry. I got you covered. Generally, don't worry. And even that, you'll still fucking enjoy it. So come along before we start this episode. Of course, love Big J. What a great fucking first guest to have as a three camera shoot, everybody. But before we do that, let's go on a little tour of what you have uh, coming for you at Skeptic Tank Studios. And if you want to watch, go to youtube.com slash skeptic tank right now. Please subscribe for all the fucking fun content we're going to have here. Um, all right, come with me. Over here, you'll see. The soundboard. Thank you, Joel Bukema, for setting this up. I'm definitely pronouncing that name wrong. Uh, it's one of those weird ethnic, came over on Ellis Island, it was changed instantly names. So maybe you want to be a, a, a guest on our Shafir Skeptic Tank, and you think, well, does he have buttons? We sure do. Buttons like this one. So this is where the magic happens. State-of-the-art sound. We're also going to do something fun. And by the way, when I say we, I mean me. We're also going to do some fun that I call the Fire Escape Sessions. Podcast. From on the Fire Escape. Nothing is too good for Skeptic Tank listeners. Oh, it's viewers, though. Yeah, you're on YouTube. Viewers. Now, if you come over here, you'll see something else. Why? It's a, it's a refrigerator. Fuck that hurt. Guys, maybe you're going to be a guest on Skeptic Podcast and goes, oh, yeah, well, I'd like to come over, but do you have ice cubes? We sure do. Over two trays worth. Maybe you want something refreshing to drink. Like a beer. Yeah, we got that too. One per person, no more. Come on in and drink up. Slowly though. Maybe you want some coffee. Oh, we've got the freshest pour over Manhattan has to offer. That's actually a good thing. Pour over coffee. Legit, if you want to be a guest, you should come. It's good coffee. Want to wash your hands to stop the spread of the virus? We got you covered at Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank Podcast Studio. Hit me up right now. All high-level guests, we're taking everybody. Come over here. You'll see something else we're doing every day. I think you'll enjoy this one. I'm teaching yoga, everybody. That's right. I'm a yogi. Not a yoga instructor. Yoga instructors are fucking bullshit. They're phonies, they're frauds. I'm a yogi. Means I've reached the highest levels of enlightenment. I have friends that have been to India. Some of them, multiple times. And I studied. I studied yoga. With Dr. Nahasha Rathed, Mahasafara Parawarad, at the University of Yoga in India. I'm not cutting. I have like 40 classes online right now. Yoga with art. We have such high level moves as this one. Oh, ah, you can feel it in here. It's legit yoga, I'm not even kidding. It's legit yoga. Oh, like that, shit like that. I'll teach you that, I'm not kidding. It's real yoga done in the style you would think I would do it. Yoga with art, it's a whole playlist. 40 classes up there right now and I'm gonna do a new one every week. Ah, that sucks. Watch this. Ooh, you didn't expect that, did you? 
because you don't expect a lot from yogis. That's your fault. You're culturally insensitive. Okay, so one last thing we're going to show you is we're going to be doing the fucking remotes when I'm guesting other people's podcasts. Come on over here. Oh, yeah, it is an interesting point. That's what I do usually. I make interesting points. Actually, I'm sorry, one second. Can you hold on really quickly? Joe Rogan, Bill Burr, uh, Adam Carolla, Mark Marin, and many of the NPR, like the serious kind of podcasts um, that I don't really know, but but they're, oh, I'm all interviewing them. They're interviewing me right now for all of them. Yeah, I got to finish a YouTube video for my new Skeptic Tank podcast studios. Hi, everybody. So I'm back. I was just doing a, an important podcast with a bunch of the top level podcasters in the world. I'm a guest on a lot of people's podcasts. And what you'll notice a lot of times is they have their fucking bookshelf behind them. I have over one book. This one that I haven't read, and this one that I have. You can see the difference. Uh, I'll be doing stuff from here. Anytime you see me on a podcast with this as the background, you know I'm at the Skeptic Tank Podcast Studios. And that's about the whole tour, everybody. Let's head back to the couch and finish off this intro. All right, everybody. That's the tour. I mean, there's other things. You know, there's a, there's a desk with a round table desk. We might have up to four guests, but it's fucking cramped. So we might not use that. I think we're going with this. Santino was actually the one who told me like two people on a couch dude. Just keep it like it was, you know, before we had video. We have a bathroom. If you want to be a guest on here, you can take a shower. No soap, but you can take a shower, air dry, or use one of our many hand towels, five of them to dry off. Do we have toilet paper? <laughs> You're sure we do. Seven rolls. You want to be a guest early if you want to be a guest. Um, so let's start the episode, you guys. How about that? Big J's on. Coincidentally, I should say this too. Also, another thing on, on Skeptic on YouTube.com slash Skeptic Tank is a new podcast called Sixth and Jump with me, Big J Okerson, and Dan Soder from television. Yeah, every week we do a podcast called Sixth and Jump. It comes out every Friday on here. And it's just us talking about the television show 21 Jump Street. I, I'm telling you, you should watch a show with us and then hear us talk about it. But even if you don't want to watch it, the show is just as good. Subscribe on on, on iTunes or on Spotify or on, on Stitcher and all those fucking places. Google Google Podcasts, all that shit. It's fucking so much fun. It's so much fun. Uh, those two guys, oh man, we shoot the shit. We, so, we fucking love it. Subscribe to that. And there's a whole playlist here for Six and Jump episodes. So what do we got? We got Six and Jump. We got Yoga. We got clips, tons of fucking clips here of old Skeptic Tank podcasts. We're going to load up all the old ones that are just going to be audio only with just a picture, but we didn't have video back then, uh, but it'll all be here. Um, so subscribe. Tell some friends about it if you don't mind. Tell them it's a great podcast and uh, and you'll like it. So let's start this episode. Me and Jay are going to talk about something serious. We're going to talk about cops, you guys. It's legit made Jay upset. It legitimately made Jay upset. And we're going to talk about what made him so upset about it. Okay? So ladies and gentlemen, Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank. Let's start, right? Let's start. Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, episode 391, Cops with Big J Okerson, starts now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, we're going to have, it's, it's, this is where you uh, like look right over the fucking guest's head. It's going to have, especially for comedians, it's going to have their tour dates and shit. Jay's in Providence. Uh, it's doing like a residency like every other week, I think. He's going to be doing the same thing in Philadelphia. Um, and he's in West Palm sometime over the summer. Uh, but just look over here and you can like subscribe, follow Big J on, on Instagram, Big J Okerson, um, Twitter if you're still on there, but fucking get off there. It's fucking awful. Uh, Big J Okerson also. And Big J Comedy is his website. Check it out. Get tickets to see a show. One of the funniest comics in America. Let's fucking start the episode. Or should we skip that? Episode 391. Cops starts. No. Well, if you want to use this song, just ask Ari Shafir. Because Ari Shafir owns this song. Use this song without permission. Ari Shafir's gonna sue your ass because Ari Shafir owns this song. Ari Shafir owns this song. Ari Shafir owns this song. Ari Shafir.
going to be in that pool probably a lot, I think. What pool? At that place. Oh. Yeah, sure, man. Yeah. I'm a big pool guy. No not a cares, huge... No one cares about your eczema. Not a huge... <laughs> not a huge... Uh, you no one cares about your... Uh, my, I love that. Oh, that's the fucking... That's the rub with the window open. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I'll oh, have oh, the air conditioning. Oh, oh. oh, I didn't realize it's the 7 o'clock thing. Yeah. At first, I thought it was just somebody being an asshole. Like, come on. Yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, there are people here. That is, dude, I just heard it yesterday for the first time, but I kind of teared up. Really? I mean, I wasn't here for it. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I was like, going. oh, whatever. And then I like, clapped like three times, and then it was just like, oh. <laughs> um, what uh, I was, I went to a, a tells place. Mm hmm. Oh, what is it? His, what'd you say? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, we went to a, place? yeah. How was it? And, uh, we didn't go to his apartment, but we went on his rooftop. Okay. With him, and this, it was during this time. What was so, what were Attell's lines about all this? Oh, uh, it was pretty funny. Hey, actually, Attell is such like a, maybe not under the radar is the wrong word for it, but I mean, he doesn't really, he doesn't publicize his own, like, you know, charity and like, uh, you know, like, uh, emotional, like, shit. Yeah. About it, but well, he's, he's like a softy. It's he, weird, it's, it's, especially it's, it's, with, so, with cops or public servants in any way. Right, you may not hear. So he definitely has like it was before all the the, the cop stuff that we went there. Firemen, whatever, you know. But anything. not even just yeah, the whole just the essential workers thing. Like he's a guy that would really be like, yeah, you really got to like be cool. You know what I mean? Like really, so he actually does like clap and he'll make jokes about the clapping, but I think it matters to him to clap that you do it. Right, because what he did know was he goes across the street from him on another rooftop. He goes, there's time. He goes, you got to see this guy comes out. I guess he plays trumpet in the Philharmonic. Oh. And he plays like a, he plays like a song. I'm trying to remember what the song was, but he plays a full song on trumpet for the whole thing. That was kind of neat. Really? Yeah, yeah, Do you see on uh, claps for St. Mark's, everybody, the guys are playing the full trumpets and they're having like, no, a, it's really? like a brass New Orleans band. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. in the middle of the street. Yeah, because well, it's like shut down for traffic. For foot traffic, yeah, yeah. This, I, I, I went with DeRosa. We went drinking. When? Sunday, no, oh, this Sunday. Yeah, we had two drinks. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And because he was gonna help me set the thing, I was like, "I'll buy you a drink," which turned into two. You know, it's Joe, and we didn't even get the fucking thing in. <laughs> um, but it's like fun out there. Mm. You can't sit and you can't piss. Yeah, it's a it's a problem. But it's just like it's a weird time. I said as I'm getting back, so I said I'm going away this weekend. Yeah, as I'm getting ready. To that go is away. nice. It's nice to get yeah. up with him like that. It's been. Months now since I've gone on the road. Uh -huh. Months. We're taking any kind of substantial trip. I mean, I guess we took the drive to go away for uh, the two weeks. Yeah. And then back. But, like, no, like, in, out, road gigs, work, shows, back on a plane, wake up early, you know, don't get a lot of sleep for a couple days, that kind of shit. It's been a while. And I do miss performing for sure. But, like, the very first hint, it's amazing. And I hope it doesn't sound like a cunt because I said it's not the it's not the job. I love the shows, yeah. But already the concept of like the day after tomorrow, I have no when I go to sleep Wednesday night. It's like five a.m. going to the airport to fucking. I don't know why you're going that fly early. Fly the thing. Well, I make sure I'm there and stuff like go that. Go the day before. Fly in the day before. Yeah. Take a two p.m. flight and just don't even worry about it. Bonfire a delay. is the issue for always that. Yeah. And also, it's just more days away from home that I already don't have enough. Yeah, you got that I fucking forgot to pull out situation. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't forget to pull out. It felt so How long ago was that? It was there. a graduation ago. So it was, yeah, it was one <laughs> high school graduate's career's worth of time ago. It was uh, like the stragglers. <laughs> yeah, the last one. Like, oh, we're doing the banging? <laughs> is it, is it? Oh. I picture it's two old ladies like trying to one up each other from different balconies. Like, ding, <laughs> bing, <laughs> ding. <laughs> Big, oh, this bitch here. Bing. Everybody wants the last one. And you ever get a Twitter fight and you see two people like fighting and like each one wants the last word? Good then. And, and, Go. then so, yeah, and someone was like, here's my point. Go ahead and get your last word. And they're like, I will get the last word because you're a fucking idiot. And they're like, that's right. Go ahead and get your last word. <laughs> they just keep yeah, they going. Go, Fuck you. Fuck you. They, go, they go, the great last word. And they go, it was a great last word. <laughs> no one's going to drop it. I find anything with that to walk away, negativity or whatever, to walk away from. It, it, you just gotta trust. Look, I say it's it, the it's secret. To, the secret to uh, quitting smoking cigarettes. All right. Well, I'm definitely gonna get an air condition put in here so I can fucking close the windows. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. 
Same thing with smoking cigarettes. It's always like, you know, you're like, I want a fucking cigarette right now. Like, even at your biggest craving, if you just can distract yourself for five minutes, you get past it. That's the whole five thing. Five minutes. It's the whole thing. Yeah. And then really what they say is three minutes. But, like, if you can get to that three minutes of, like, really itching for Which it, you just get past it. Which is such a small amount of time. Sure. Yeah, but go ahead. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to remember the point now. Okay, hold on. What pot. Your daughter. Smoking pot. That big thing came up. Weed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I've then, smoked so much pot that I forgot the initial thing I just said that we're trying to remember how it ties in. Um, the five minutes. Mm-hmm. Give it five minutes. I always have to backtrack on this my intros where I'm like, hold on, where? why did I think of this? This is good. It's what? why you, you got to give yourself a few minutes to think about it. Th- yeah, I got to think. Oh, I got oh, you. Oh, we got it. I do. I do remember it. It's uh, <laughs> yeah. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> bang, bang. Yeah. The, uh, the phone, man, I might have lost it again. <laughs> we just distracted enough to lose it again. No, online uh, negativity. Yeah, you just got an idea. Well, I, <laughs> uh, online negativity, it, it is interesting when it comes, it's like you get so heated. You're like, why would this fucking person say this? Like, what's their problem? Yeah. Like, fuck off, dude. And then just like, uh, you know, but like if you walk away from it, it's like after a while, like, who gives a shit? Who gives a like, shit who at all? Who possibly gives a shit? Some, uh, one wrote a thing under my comment today. I f- I guess the, the post they put up today for me was something about uh, settling down young. Yeah. It says. I, I don't even remember what it was from my special. I don't know. It might have been settling Crowdwork or something. Settling down young. Yeah, I don't remember what the bit is, but that's what the title is of the oh, clip. Oh, okay, yeah. It's called Settling Down Young. And mm-hmm. someone goes like, oh, yeah, great advice from someone who cheated their entire Jesus. relationship. It's this whole thing. And it's like, yeah, you know that because I've <laughs> talked about it and said like, yeah, it was shitty. And did all this. I'm like, what are you... What? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's such a weird thing. People are like, you know, That's and, I hate and the then Yankees fans, jump, that. I feel the fans jump in. They're like, uh, he's spoken. Like, he's aware of his mistakes. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, I feel you bad. Only, like, you're you're only aware of them because I told you. <laughs> yeah. That's why I hate it when the Yankees would get on, um, who was it? Where it's like, who's your daddy? Mm. That great pitcher for the Red Sox? Pedro Martinez. Yeah. Because he kept getting beat in the playoffs by them, by the Yankees. Yeah. And then eventually he's like, you know, sometimes you got to just fucking say like you know just call him your daddy and move on they, they got you they got your number and they'd be like who's your dad like they uncovered something and I wanted yeah. to be like guys it's his quote yeah, you're using it you're against using him. his quote against him he didn't same miss- exact thing he <laughs> said thing. you got me <laughs> exactly was this guy cheated his whole marriage and blah blah like yeah also what what, what are you Way into the sanctity of marriage? <laughs> yeah, it's like, why are you so worried about my... And by the way, he goes, are you looking at my comedy show as relationship advice or whatever? That's why I see people when they're like, I'm never going to support this dude again because he went on the wrong side of comedy. He said someone so, like, went too far. And I'm like, oh, guys, that's not why you should be going to see somebody's comedy show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for their views? Yeah, you really should just be like, what kind of show they put on? It's, it's almost the, the only thing, really. Do I like their comedy? Yeah. And that is why I pay fifteen dollars twice a month to go see Bill Cosby in Riker's Art. <laughs> Say what you will about the man. The guy's got fun ideas. I always said that. You gotta separate the art from the artist, no matter how bad the fucking artist you is. You have to. I mean, like, I watched a good forty five minutes. I never watched that documentary, the uh I mean they're airing it on cable, so you know, again, this is all allegations, even though it looks he looks pretty good for it. Is Michael Jackson, but he had that "This Is It" documentary, which is like a backstage, behind the scenes documentary of his tour he was going to go on. Oh, the last one. So you kind of get to like see what the tour would have been through these like pre- rehearsals. Yeah, how was it? Great. I mean, there's plenty of Michael Jackson songs I couldn't give two shits about, or I think are downright like terrible. But for the ones I liked, it looked pretty amazing. The guy could dance. You know what I mean? Like, Looking back, i he was his talented. Skill, everything, yeah, everything <laughs> of his skill, you're like, yeah, the guy was good. I don't know. It's like, should uh, we bring him back from the dead? I'm like, I, I mean, just to like put him in prison, I guess. I mean, he's like, he seems like a bad guy. But like, you know, I'm like, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't mean he can't dance. <laughs> yeah, it's got nothing to do with that. That's what I said. That's about- why people get so mad. They're like, it's for comics, we always get mad. It's like, no, we're just talking about your word choice. Like the like the what's her name is being brave for becoming a woman. It's like, well, I'm not brave. Well, it's listen, like you don't think she should. I'm like, no, for sure she should. Just brave is the is the. If you're like to be passionate about it, if you have a child who was molested in similar fashion, or maybe just molested at all, uh-huh. and you have like a real dark like personal hatred for Michael Jackson, yeah, I fully fucking get it. But when you th- are things that aren't affect, you know, what I mean, to be that passionate always t- makes me worried about. The person who's saying it, who's who's yelling like that, like what are you hiding? Like who hurt like the you? Pe- the, the real, like it's like you know the the white girl with uh, whatever pigtails and stuff screaming "Black Lives Matter." It's like 
throwing a Molotov cocktail into a cop yeah, it's car. Like, it's like, what horrible thing did you do to black people that you're trying to, to yeah. make up for here? Did you, like, what did you not you have do? a single black friend in high school? Is that it? Did That's, you not have a single one? I think we talked about this the other day uh, off microphone, but I was saying the, the feeling of like, I'm curious about going back to comedy and doing like, you know, a racial joke and having people be like, no, and really just wanted to question like, would you have laughed at this joke three months ago? And it's like, really, and I'm at, well, the question that I'm asking there is really like, would you have laughed at it three months ago and now you're not laughing at it because you say you've changed? But like, I didn't really have to change through this. There was no change I needed right. to make. I, I, I've always been against police killing black people. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've always thought black lives matter. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't have to change for any of this. Yeah. So it's like when, when someone's like, how can you say that now? It's like, because I don't feel different now than I felt before. I'm making a joke. But also the audience always puts shit on you about the current events. Mm -hmm. So like I had a joke about seeing I got jerk off on the subway and it worked fine for a couple of years, you know? And then the, you know, our buddy got in, uh, into some hot water for masturbation, so public for masturbating in front of people. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, and um, and then as I'm doing it, it be, people are like, what, "What are you trying to say about him?" And I'm like, "No, no, it, it this bit yeah. predates any of that, you guys." I, what? Yeah. yeah, like you're reading into it. People like to read into it. They love to. That's the thing. So you give me that great example. <laughs> you go, "Do you like chocolate or vanilla better?" Do I like chocolate better. <laughs> and they go, "Why does Jay Ogerson hate vanilla?" <laughs> it's coming up at the ten. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah, why Jay Ogerson hates vanilla? And so, it's simple. Jay, I would like to say, you know, a lot of this, the, the protests. I think the change is really amazing and stuff like that. I mean, mm -hmm. I got asked once on maybe Buffalo radio. There was a woman there who was on the radio station, and her husband was some like hero in the in the army. Okay. Like legit, like saved a bunch of people on his shoulders, you know, mm -hmm. from Iraq and Afghanistan, shit like that. Um, and they're like, what do you think about Colin Kaepernick? And I mean, baiting me, I didn't know. And I was like, yeah, I think it's great. And they're like, what do you think is great? I'm like, you know, America, you can say your piece. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. And they're like, so do you think, whatever. I'm like, ah, I'm just saying, it's, it's wonderful to be able to express yourself. What a great country we live in. And she was just so mad at me. But like, um, what was I going to say now? Fuck. Oh, and so I'm enthralled by the change, by the people like calling attention to all the fucking mm -hmm. shit that's happening, all the videos coming out now. Uh, one lady I saw, she was dismissed from the police force like 10 years ago because she jumped on some, a cop who jumped on somebody's back saying, get off him, you're beating them to death. And she was pushed out, no pension. And now they're like, uh, let's give her her pension back. Yeah, We yeah. shouldn't have fired her. She was actually doing the right thing. Um, and all this change is all like pretty amazing. Yeah. However, there are some negative consequences. <laughs> and I think you've suffered more than anybody here. Um, oh, oh, buddy. There were some things where they've gone a little too far. And I'm telling you. I felt so bad They for you. smashed in the windows oh, down Fifth Avenue. There's been flaming cars. Damage to, to private property and uh, of like, you know, small business owners. And some real fucked up shit. I don't agree with a lot of that. I also appreciate the expression. I appreciate the change that's going to come from it. Uh-huh. Uh, the change that is coming from it, but some things, there was no need to even, to, it, it, the collateral damage in the most nonsensical way, and that is, I, I know what you're bringing up is the, the, the cancellation of the longest running television reality program in, his, in history. Wow. 30 years. Wow. 30 plus years. It just beat, it just beat. A Russian show, Killing a Bolshevik, where they killed a Bolshevik every every episode for 31 years. And this 31. is just... Yeah, oh, it, man. And it beat they were it right now. there. <laughs> They're probably behind it. They tampered with things. <laughs> exactly. It got it canceled. The they got cops canceled, so it didn't hit over the, the <laughs> kill the Bolshevik. Um, yeah, man. It was... They canceled that show. Such a bummer. It was so your favorite show. Well, going over to your place, and it's like, hey, we don't have to leave for like 20 minutes. You want to watch the... 10 minutes of cops you're it's like, well, okay. you know in a thing like it's not like when I go home at night yeah it's not always gonna be like I'd rather watch like let's watch a movie or a series that we like or something like that my thing is in the small windows of like alright I got out of the shower at 1.30 I don't have to leave for work till 2.30 I don't feel like turning on video games I'll watch two cops have it on sort of 40 minutes yeah, yeah playing candy crush or solitaire in the background and just you know you look up when you see some goofy thing happening <laughs> you know, what's that <laughs> what do i hear the echoes of white trash yeah <laughs> I, well, I, I found more interesting 
and weird was I don't know what they're are they doing that to protect the cops or punish the cops because cops shows they, cops they, to be they, pretty fucking they, shitty. They canceled two things. They canceled that and, and live PD. Don't understand either of them. Live PD now, was just a knockoff show. Live PD was, but it was live. Uh, they went three hours live. I have some DVR. I'll show them to you. Here's okay. the thing: not as good as cops, but he, that's why it was live. So Whereas cops was best of. Cops was a, an edited together thing. But what cops did show, I would say, police like uh, abuse, uh, very often, very often, excessive force, constantly. That knee on the neck thing. Standard procedure on cops. <laughs> so like, he put his knee on his neck. I go, isn't that what they do? I just stopped to question it because I did question it for years watching cops. I'd be and then like, eventually, like, I guess like, they know the that cameras knee on, on the them. back thing seems very not necessary. <laughs> like, I don't say, it seems like a real fuck you at the end. You know what I mean? Uh, I've seen cops like uh, getting the punch, like punches with people on the show. Cops, oh, looking like buffoons and falling and messing up and wiping out. Like they, they, they do show it all, but it doesn't show them in the best light. At the end of the day, according to the, at least a decade of the episode you're watching, because it's it's weird now seeing like. Old old nickel bag. It's weird now seeing nickel bag of weed arrests. Oh, nickel bag. Yeah. First of all, show. weed arrests at all. And second of all, just at all. How'd you get a nickel bag? That's yeah, like it, this much now. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, like, really. That's like a hit. But nickel bag of weed arrests like happen on the show, and that, that's weird to sw- swallow. But you're like, at the time, it probably made total sense. That song, I got five on it. That means now you're going in with nine people. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> easy. Yeah, enough for that many people, yeah. and enough for yourself. It's yeah, you're gonna need to up the people, or up the people, and the weed. Um, nickel bag of weed uh, arrests. Uh, but it, it, what they did edit it together was that like you're not gonna get a bunk. All right, well I nothing guess there's really nothing happened. really. Yeah. All right, well here I'm let you off with a warning type thing. Uh, here and there they'll let you off with a warning thing because the guy was weird or something or. You know, if the, they, the one time they let off like a, a a trucker that was like dressed in lingerie, they let him go. But it's like, like they tickets. let him go. But it's like we got the footage. We, we need. have the footage of a guy uh, dr- arguing, you know, smoking a cigarette, a trucker and a truck stuff, wearing like women's lingerie. He's like, I don't know, man. Like she just came in and, and I, I heard the fight. He's like a witness in a fight kind of thing. It was a yeah. boring thing, but like you saw the the, the cross dresser. <laughs> that was what was interesting about the episode. Live PD. Uh, I, I'm starting to think that was a cancellation by the police to be like, ah, you know what? Don't show us more than a punishment because I'm like live PD. Like, what would you want more? It's body cams than a show of showing you the activity of police. It's like C-SPAN. Right. It's like in re- show Congress. in real time. Yeah. Not even like they're going to edit this later and change it and make it look not so bad. Like you're right. not even taking that risk. You're just going like these cops have to play it by the book. They are on live television broadcast around the country that is crazy and because so also like that's you gone you- as a punishment i'm like let me tell you something the cops that house shows like cops yeah and live pd i bet those cops are like oh fucking thank god man enough like holy shit man like we have to do every you know what i mean like they're not fucking zipping through red lights, putting on their cherries just to get through a red light and parking at high jumps. The, there's no fucking way. So they can't wait to go back to like turn the camera back, off. Taking back normal the small shit. thing. Forget even like hurting people or planning shit or any of that stuff. Just the simple like dick wave of being a cop. I think those shows I, kept them more in check than probably possible. I just figured out white privilege right now as you were saying that because I realized like, you know, when they flip their lights on to go through a red light. Mm-hmm. I remember, like in high school, like that's a fucking abuse of power. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's, like, the that's the abuse of power. Yeah. Yeah. My tax dollars pay for you to go through that <laughs> I red just light. Just wear the red light, you motherfucker. And your black friends are like, you went too far. You think that's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> he's going through the red light to go beat up a black kid for buying a nickel bag of weed yeah I'm like I'm, I'm a lily white Jewish upbringing I'm like you could have waited for the light to change to do the same thing look at this guy parked right in front of a hydrant what I mean what do we do what are we, what are we, what are we, what are we paying these guys for <laughs> yeah dude you it, only a white person ever ever has pointed a finger at a cop and been like, I pay yourself. It's never been said by a black person. Or I've never said it either. Yeah, or uh, Greek, because Greek people don't pay taxes. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they literally don't pay their salary. Really, it's all that, cash that, business. That goes, I pay your salary. But do I, we, we saw that from a guy. We saw a fight down at the cellar outside the Blue Note. Yeah. One night. Fucking crazy. It was a husband and wife hammered uh-huh. they were doing the wrestling for the keys game with their hands 
and we were watching that. It was like a drunken, like, you know, I'm driving, I'm driving, or you're not driving, no one's <laughs> driving. Like, who's going who's gonna to get the DUI? Whatever the thing was. And then, like, it, it was pretty physical, but not like a thing where you needed to jump in. It just looked stupid yeah. and older and drunk. This is people in their late 50s, easy. And uh, and then they stopped fighting, and the woman was, like, in her phone, and the guy was, like, smoking a cigarette and just, like, you know, wobbling with drunk. And the woman was hammered, too. And he, we're all watching him, and he just hauls off while she's looking at her phone and sucker punches her right in the face, drops her, and then jumps on her and keeps hitting on her. And everybody runs over there and, like, pulls it apart. Like, once is like, all right, that's crazy, but more. It's crazy. It's like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Everybody, dude, everybody ran over there on the first shot. It was just like, it was, it was insane, that move. Wow. And they pull him apart and, like, took forever for the cops to get there. Several things I noticed that night that I found very interesting. The cops left him uncuffed, sitting in front of their car, knowing he, forever. Yeah, with a hundred and one accounts of everybody saying like this guy attacked that woman, attacked her. Didn't cuff him until the last minute, put him in the car. This thing was like a twenty some minute ordeal. No exaggeration. They never cuffed him at the end. They let her go over to him, and she's going like, "I'm sorry, I'm so sorry." Like she's upset he's getting arrested. He's calling her a fucking cunt. He's screaming that she's a cunt, and he's doing the thing to the cops. I pay your fucking salaries. You fucking work for me. And the cops are just kind of taking it. And it's just like a weird, like, what's happening? We watched a thing on Bonfire the other day. There's a white guy. I got to remember his name. The Bonfire and it's Sirius good. XM that you and Dan Soder run? That is. That is the show. You, Dan Soder, and Black Lou? Me, Dan Soder, and Black Lou. King, uh, Black King, Black Lewis Johnson. Um, we put in a lion roar there now. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black King, Black Lewis Johnson. Dude, Black Lou. I'm sorry. I got to separate for a second. He's so... I don't know how you found these guys, but I went in there two times ago, maybe three times ago. It was hot, so it had to be last summer, I guess, mm -hmm. maybe four times ago. Who knows? But I get there. He gets me from the from the desk at Sirius. We're walking in, and he's like, hey, they're on break. Um, bring, in, like, bring in right now. And uh, I was like, oh, hey, can, uh, can you let me know when I'm with Becker and I'm going naked? And he goes, okay. And just like, <laughs> did, did Paul, didn't yeah, even yeah. like, okay. And then just like waited till you got going again. He's like, all right, come on in. I was like, okay. Dude, our whole crew is perfect. Mm -hmm. That kind of shit, man. Black Lou, DJ Lou. Everyone's like so great at their job. Um, but on the bottom, Soto showed me this thing that you have to see. It's like this guy. He's a lawyer, I guess. Yeah. I guess That's what he's a real job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that what it's called? Am is I saying it right? Law law Am I saying it right? Lawyer? lawyer? <laughs> yeah. Um, he's a uh, he's a lawyer and he goes and drives like to a police station. I don't know if he does a bunch of these. Yeah. There's a guy named Jimmy Justice who does a similar thing where he goes and sees like police cops breaking traffic laws. Not police cops, uh, police cops, traffic cops. Yeah. Breaking traffic laws. And he screams at them like a maniac. That's great. It's so funny. He's like, he's like, you're a boob. There's no reason for you to be parked at this hydrant. You're a boob. And she goes, <laughs> what a great she goes, insult. get that camera out of my face. He goes, I can film you. It's my right to film you. You're breaking the law. You're breaking the law, you boob. You be he's just boob. Like, he gets them like coming out of restaurants <laughs> with like their wives, like with a police placard parked at a hydrant, like coming back into his car, just parked there for like whatever reason you know what i mean just like uh, there was no parking available so he yeah. just used his power to park there and he calls him out it's great that's great this guy it's the funny he pulls up and he starts grilling a police officer like he's a police officer but he himself he's like where are you coming from and the cop's like what he's like where are you coming from what'd you do today he's like what the hell did you do today man he goes i'm asking the questions right now what do you do to the, it's just like a ball and the guy like wow. buckles and it ends in a childish like he, the, the, the lawyer's like yeah walk away cop walk away and the guy's walking away he uh, I think says he won't give him his uh, badge number or something like that and he's like yeah walk away walk away right now and the guy turns around and he turns around and stares at him for like 20 seconds the cop the cop stares at boob man yeah but, no no he's not it's not the same guy this is a different guy oh, now, okay. this lawyer guy uh, but he's he's not calling he doesn't call them boobs. He's just doing like he's more of just an aggressive like it's like more like controlled. You know what I mean? He's like, no, I have a right to ask you what you've been doing today. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. And uh, but when, he, when he's leaving, yeah, the, the, the guy in the car goes to the cop. He's like, yeah, walk away, walk away. That's right. And then the cop is like, you're not going to tell me what to do, kind of thing. So he turns around, and stares him for 20 minutes. But you can only do that for so long before it's uncomfortable well, the guy's for going, you. Walk away. Walk away, dude. And he keeps saying until the guy eventually had to turn around and walk away again. And it's just like, 
in a million years, dude, no chance would I fucking take a shot at doing that. Not mm. not in a million years. No way would I assume that might work out for me. Because also, like, I don't know. What if he takes his fucking baton out and hits me? And right. you're like, well, we have it on video. He goes, I don't want a baton beating, man. <laughs> like, I don't want to be a national story of, like, police yeah. abuse. Like, I just want to fucking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, that's why it's I, like, just, the, I, just, I just, yes, sir, no, sir. I understand. Thank you very much. Uh, you I'm know. an idiot. Russ Meneve used to have that joke, and it's such a funny thing. Like, how many times you've, what a fucking queef move that you've, cop gives you a tickets and you thank him. I've done that. So many times. So many times. Thank you. Like, uh, thank you, officer. And you're just like, well, what you're saying is like, thank you for not just combing to worse. find some reason to arrest me. Yeah. It's all we're saying. You get pulled over right away. You're like, what is there going to be it's, here? it's like you're still trying to be respectful so it doesn't get worse. Yeah. And so you're like, thank you. But it's already over now. And so it's like, and that's the one that hurts the most because you're like, there was no reason for me to be a suck up now. There's no reason. It's already over. I could have been like, not even that, even before the suck up, when really the reality is like, just unless you have something on you that's like illegal. I've been put all over... Almost every time I could think of where I didn't have anything. Like, well, that's not, I had a suspended license I was driving on for a while, which was a bad... I didn't realize how bad that was. But, um, <laughs> but you know, when you get pulled over, you're like, I do think it's going to go bad. So, yeah, it's like you're just like dick sucky to not... But you really, if you have nothing illegal, you can deal with every cop situation that pulls you over with like a what? Yeah. You know what I mean? He goes, do you know why I pulled you over? Just fucking tell me why. I did it one time. I don't want to play a fucking game. Tell me why. You could do that, and they have to just, like, keep respecting you. They have to. Now, they could try to run you through the ringer, and, uh, but I, the thing is, like, but they don't I would have never, anything I would on never you. believe you could do that. I would, Even if I had nothing on me, I'd be like, I'd still be, sir, thank you for the tickets. Thank I you. I did it one time. I was leaving the ice house, and I, I, I had to come around the park, whatever, and I was getting into the freeway, and there's two left lanes turned left under the freeway. It was a double entry ramp. Mm-hmm. And so I was in the middle lane of one, two, three, and, it, and it's sick. So I went, and he turned his lights on. He's like, you, you shifted over the last minute, and you went into I'm like, no, no, it was two lanes turn. And he goes, no, no, just one lane turn. I'm like, no, no, I saw it. It's two lanes turn. And he was like, you could see him, like, wonder, like, is he wrong? Because I was positive. I looked at right. him. He was like, all right, get out of here. But I want to be like, no, don't yell at me. Yeah, say, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I did I it right. That, yeah. <laughs> you say sorry. But I, I'm not going to say that. But cops... And live PD, that's a thing. It's like they're not going to be those assholes with the camp with the live cameras on them at all times. Why would you want them? I, I don't have the punishment for them. Is it's take like the saying, cameras turn off your body cams. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like someone telling you, "Hey, we're going to do you a favor and turn off those security cameras outside your apartment." Thank like, Could you please you. not? Oh, yeah, like yeah. Uh, no. I want to <laughs> see if somebody breaks in. Do you remember when cops came out? Do you remember where you were? Like how old you were? Thirty-three. Is that what it is? Is it thirty-three years? We should look it up. We should. Look um, 33, I mean, sounds about right. This probably. episode is brought to you by Apple. Apple, makers of iPhones. Okay. Owners of Google. Inventors of space travel. <laughs> Give all bad information. <laughs> this is wrong. Cops first year. Uh, this is 1989. 1989. It's 31. <laughs> when the show went primetime in 1991. Wow. It came out right away at primetime, I thought, on Fox right away. Promote. Okay, hold on. It's on Fox forever. There's Cops was created by whatever. Who gives a fuck? Tried unsuccessfully for several years to get a network to carry the program. Really? People turned it down. A show that lasted. This is how dumb fucking television people were. <laughs> yeah, no well, shit. Why is our medium failing? Because you only hired morons. <laughs> It went seven years. It went the longest it's ever gone. And oh uh, man, for, could you for imagine? Several years, several years, and they were like, ah, man. And it came at uh, eighty nine. Yeah, you say. Uh, could you strike, imagine? Writer strike. They say couldn't get anything, so it was like, all right, we'll take your fucking. Is that real? No union writers. That's fucking hilarious. I'll tell you what's so funny about that. It would have been great to have like a late seventies. Late seventies cops, early early eighties cops, like Popeye Doyle. You'd have just (laughs) never trust an N word. What you'd have, never trust. You'd have like legit (laughs) abuse of power video because that that was a time they wouldn't even have cared about you seeing it. Dude, there was a show. There was Chicago PD. One Remember of those shows like that. Or black guy for real, and be like, "What are you doing in this neighborhood, son?" And they would show it on TV. He goes, "Look at these guys keeping our neighborhood safe." Exactly. <laughs> there was a Chicago one of those cop shows on like CBS, something like that. And, the, and it was like four or five years ago. And it was like uh, they don't play by the rules. And then people were like, "Hey, that's fucking bullshit." Like the audience was like, "That's awful." And they're like, "Oh, what?" They're like, "Yeah, man, we don't. 
as a group of society, we don't want that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, they had to change the whole marketing campaign. We don't play by the rules. <laughs> it's like, no, you we guys, need you to play by the rules. You guys have to play by the strictest of rules. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the letter of the law. <laughs> that was a dirty, airy thing. It was like, I'll go rogue. I'll do my <laughs> own thing. And now it's like, don't ever do that. <laughs> uh, we get people get jacked up because he plays by his own rules. You cost the city $35,000 of destroyed property. He goes, so what? I caught the guy. He goes, that's a major problem. That's a, problem. <laughs> that's a budgeting nightmare. What do you mean? What's who cares? You can't just shoot willy nilly at stuff. <laughs> I've caught the guy. Didn't yeah, I? <laughs> I shot him from the. I shot him from the floor of the mall. He was on the third balcony. You can't just shoot there was a <laughs> there shopping. Were kids around. Yeah. I never miss. You might miss. <laughs> That's not going to fly in court. <laughs> yeah, I never miss. Uh, I submit to you that he's never missed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Lewis Gomez thing. Do it, everyone's like, I've seen you miss. <laughs> ah, dolly. I never That's miss. Lewis, my favorite. He's he he guarantees things uh -huh. that he knows he can't guarantee. There's no and idea one way or the other. He hopes he he gets and he throws percentages true. of things that he does not know the percentage of it all. Trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. He goes ninety nine percent of things happen this way. <laughs> Uh, I was so if it was 89 31 and, years man yeah that's a wow. long fucking time I was 15 I was high, early high school you were younger than that do you think I remember it coming out and be like wow it's a fun thing to possibly bad look boys, up bad boys bad boys what I was good about that right there do you think inner circle from that is wealthy off the song bad boys or do you think they got a shit deal for a new reality tv show on fox i bet people want to and go 89 see them. fox by the way was not like killing the fucking game they probably had, had uh married with children was the big deal on fox i'd say probably most at that point <sighs> the bad maybe boys. simpsons did you know they were also the bad boys of Brecca? um or they, like, <laughs> they were known as that the inner circle band yeah wait what what's today's about the simpsons what uh, I said Fox was being carried by Simpsons and Married with Children. Simpsons, the werewolf show? Werewolf. Werewolf, that was called? John J. York? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the first ones. But Married with Children meet, was went huge. Went to go meet him at, uh, went to go meet him at the Philadelphia Car Show. He's still a werewolf, but he's got gray hair now. John J. York. Wow, that's crazy Born you know werewolf. that name. I, I'm sorry I didn't give that more weight, that you know a 31-year-old actor and only that. Not only that. John J. York, and the other guy, Chuck Connors was the bad werewolf. I believe his name is Chuck Connors was uh, in I think uh, one of the airplane movies. That's um, all, I'm out of I'm out of trivia. Oh really? On that one. Yeah. They reformed. Sweat. Remember the sweat? La 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 la. Oh, that's, that's inner circle. That's inner circle. Well, I'm gonna make you sweat. Several international sweat hit singles. You can't sweat no more. <coughs> yeah, that was a good song. I didn't know that was them. So Maybe they're wrong because the bad boys. Oh, yeah, the Bad Boys uh, movies. Yeah. Yeah. And surprise, Live PD. I bet PD, they still play off it because people uh, still think, oh, they were good. Live, go P, Live PD goes so far to rip off the show. Their opening song is, here come the host stamp of murder. <laughs> Do they really? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am the lyrical gangster. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Officer. <laughs> <laughs> and SVU uses Informer by Snow. <laughs> Licky boom boom down. Yeah, that's the wires thing. Um, yeah, it was fucking groundbreaking. It was. It was like wow. My dad. My dad loved. I didn't even see my dad that much, but he loved it and always had it on. And one thing about it, it was, it's the best word I always use for it. What? It's just consistent. It's consistent. I don't remember black in that show. I remember poverty. Yeah, yeah. Like, white, oh, yeah, like, like yeah, yeah. what are you doing without a shirt on at night? Poverty. I mean, the white trash the on white that trash. Is, top, is top, top notch. Like, Wild West of West Virginia kind of type, like, trash, these people. Most of the black crimes, pretty straight up things. There'd be a lot of robbery runs, you know what I mean? Serving warrants, the guys running for drugs, but they had warrants. And it's it, it's actually, it makes sense, like, more of the boring things they put in the compilations sometimes on that, like, chases high speed chases blah, stuff like that like yeah. black guys running and getting like caught ultimately and it's like drugs or a gun or something like that like the show's real brilliance is brought to life by the white trash the i mean white tr the spousal abuse stuff mm -hmm. which was just so consistent yeah well are you gonna keep them there forever can i bail them out like miss you should go to Didn't a he hospital just punch you? you should go to a hospital he goes i should shut up <laughs> <laughs> they really yeah they don't i look i was saying that fight on the street right there that lady was like 
didn't want the cops to take that guy to jail. And it's almost like you could see she was telling those cops in her own way, like, you don't understand. If you bring this guy to jail, I'm when he gets out, he's so- going to get out tomorrow no matter what. He's going to come home and fuck my world. <laughs> and, 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 and one of two or not both ways. He's either one going to come beat the shit out of me, but he might be afraid to do that right now because he's got the strike. And, you know, maybe this is the first time they've been called. Would blow my mind if that was the case. But if, uh, let's say it's the first time they were called, and now he's shook by it. He's leaving her, and and probably he's probably the guy with the dough that like takes care. Of him. I'm, you know, I'm all speculation. Yeah, who knows? But yeah, I'm just saying it looked like her personality of not wanting him to go to jail. You were just like, she's gonna be your star witness, and she was just like, no, it was dumb. We were just having a dumb thing, and it's like, lady, he sucker. I've never seen that. The level blind of blindside a woman, blindside up to blindside where they punch. To the, not a slap, not a backhand. A closed fisted turned his whole body into it. The one in the cellar? S- yeah, slugged her in the face while her head and was, her she face was, saying, was down. Forget about it. Begging the cops not to wow. arrest him. Wow. Begging the cops not to arrest him. Where, where ever, other people were huddled around her going, like, Miss, Get come out. on. Like, don't do it. Like, 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 go stay somewhere tonight and don't go back ever. Like, that's it. Cra- drunk. At your drunkest, dude. I Lewis would never drop a woman's a sucker glass punch. glass and missed at Kurt Metzger, and it took them nine months to make up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, This yeah, lady yeah. was ten minutes later. By the way, it was a cup. It was, it was a, a plastic <laughs> cup of <laughs> full of fluid. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. He didn't miss. I blocked it. <laughs> In one of the most deft moves in the history of Did you my really pocket. Block it? Oh, you never saw the picture? No. I see the picture. Soder's got a shirt. That's me. Lewis threw it, and I was able to slap it out of the air. And then, like, it's funny, we kept running with it so much, where it was like, then I had to go to Lewis. No. Nope. <laughs> the Batambo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. But uh, yeah, I was able to slap it away. Lucky shot that I was able to slap it away. Not that, again, I didn't know it was a plastic cup. Let me ask you a question. I thought, I, it was, I thought it was a glass cup. I wasn't so. there. Did you slap it away or did you accidentally hit it while you went like this? No, no, no. You, I definitely, I'm, I'm up going towards it. Wow. For sure. I'm trying to get between so the situation. Like, yeah, I, I pulled it out of the air magically. Wow. Um, And it didn't, I guess, we all got sort of wet. <laughs> like, but I, I, in my mind, like, it wouldn't have mattered much. Like, I really didn't have to block it because the reality is it was a plastic cup, but I didn't know it was plastic cup. What is Lewis that gets so worked up that he's like, as he's like getting madder and madder, he's like, keep talking. <laughs> that he's like looking at it. He's like, you know what? The decision to be like, no. And just like, I'm going to shut you up. It's Kurt, dude. Kurt. He's too I don't smart. Know, I don't know how Kurt didn't smell that coming down the bike <laughs> a million miles away. I do believe something about Kurt being so smart. His mind's always going so much, and he's three thoughts ahead or three thoughts behind where he was still. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, he's, 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 it's, but it's all explosion in the moment of whatever it is, and he's not, his mind's not in the game. It's like, and hey, Kurt, I know you're believing what you're saying or trying to be funny or whatever it is, but I'm just like, you're not taking a peek around and see that on either side of you is a guy that wants to hit you, man. <laughs> like, why are you not seeing, like, de-escalate this? <laughs> but, but, Lewis, but, but Kirk came over on a thing. It's like, Lewis, we're friends. This is fucking stupid. This is dumb. So whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like, he comes over on that thing, but in that still stayed, like, dismissive. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he still stayed, like, <sighs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Lewis, you fucking dummy with your thing of that. And Lewis is just, like, not in the place... To be playing around, you know what I mean? It's whole thing's like you're a fucking asshole. You know, it, it was it was so bad and I rate. But they're touring now, which is fantastic. That's pretty actually. cool. One, it's a good show, and two, uh, uh, just, I'm so happy. I hate, do I hate fighting friends? I fucking it's so hate annoying it. to get in the middle of it too. Or when they try to talk shit about one to the other, just like that's what I was. In the, that was the whole bunch of like, yo, talk to your boy and tell him, tell him he's not welcome on the thing. You're like. Man, please come Why? on. Man, Why please. do I have to do it? Just yeah. to, you tell him. That's what happened with CBs and the comedy seller. They brought me in the middle of that. I had it's somehow like, I had somehow feel the negotiations. Really? Of, of stop stealing our clientele. In, no, it was like a so a full thing. And they were like, "Hey, you guys really shouldn't be fighting." I, I don't know if like Wayne or someone extended the arm, or or Gnome asked if I would bring the two of them together or whatever. And like the f- craziest thing about that was bringing over CBs Comedy Club was a small little like whole room that opened whole. up in a in a basement of a restaurant. The Stefano brought me there once. Brought yeah. me up from New York Comedy Club and gave me a ride and he was yeah. like, I think I can get you up. And yeah. he did. I, I didn't hate the room. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. It 20 was, people? 25? I think it sold out at like 30 people, I think, yeah. Um, small little room, but fun. I went, and I've killed down there before, you know what I mean? It's a small room, so it feels like you're yeah, murdering right. in that room if you do well. And uh, And Wayne was running it. 
and uh, and C uh, and, and CB was the owner. She was a sweetheart. Oh, this is CB. Yeah. Yeah, it was called CB's Comedy Club. Yeah, 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 it was her. She's a rich girl. Lived in a to it was one of those weird New York things. You walk up like three flights of crickety stairs that were all fucked up, and then you open the door and you are in a magazine quality fucking wow. place. And I think her parents owned the building. Dude, that's Ralph's place. It's our pa- Ralph's place. You walk in, it looks like the fucking when when uh when the dude from Breaking Bad just started having shitty friends do mm-hmm. coke and just like it looks like that in the lobby. And then you're like, what? Sure, Ralph, but this is. S- better 10 times Ralph's wow. place well one on size it was enormous it was like well before that was a thing like she could walk in and be like it could walk in and be like play you know whatever song Bon Jovi Slippery when wet <laughs> and like it started playing yeah she had like that kind of shit she had a hot uh-huh. tub outside on a what? beautiful deck what that's my dream yeah it was amazing her place was amazing Have and you just- uh yeah. she, was, she was wealthy and she comes from money and whatever and she had this restaurant which went under uh, ultimately, but anyway, like, but she was always a sweet. She invited us to her house before me and Dave Smith hung out there. I think we could have fucked her, but we didn't. Um, but we uh, <laughs> we were hanging out, and she was always just sweet, yeah. very generous with like the food. Or at least Wayne was generous with her food and money or whatever. And uh, and then I was like, oh, can you get it together? And I was like, yeah. I go, CB's a sweetheart, and she kicked up talking to me. I was like, I don't know why there's an argument going on here with me and Gnome. As a comedy star, I don't understand why there's this drama. I go, I don't either. It's I, I wish you guys didn't think. And then it was like, somehow, I don't know, maybe I was even the one they got to go over there and be like, no, she'd like to talk to you. She's like, a, she was like a cool chick or whatever. And it was like, well, you set up the thing. And I, I, I let myself get put in the middle of it. You know what I mean? Because I'm a dummy. But you think it's all with good intention. And I remember like CB was like, she wants me to walk her over because she was nervous to go over there. So I walk her. This is how it looks. This is the optics of it. Me, Wayne, and CB walk over to the comedy cellar. Gnome comes right to those front tables in the inside and goes like, have a seat. Can I get you something to drink? And she was like, I've never seen her person. She just does a 180. She goes, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Like, she's no aggressively. Way. She's like, what? well, I think we should talk. She goes, talk about what Gnome, what's bothering little Gnome today. She was like doing that, like the like deep balling and whatever. I was like, oh, I'm like, what? Like, I walked in with her. It looks like I brought this problem to the table. And I, I was, I was apologetic to them. I thought I was like, what the, dude? I go, I'd never seen her like that. I don't know what the fuck that was. I would recommend not having a conversation with her again. Like, don't even give that a second world. That was fucking really, crazy. dude. She went in there and just like was like, "Fuck you, gnome. You don't tell me what to." I'm like, but I mean, also like her whole thing of, was like, "I'm nervous. I don't know why we're fighting. We shouldn't be in a." Thing. If it wasn't comedy though, if a pizza place opened and then some other pizza place was like trying to fucking bury them in that neighborhood, you'd be like, <laughs> "What? Who are you? Get the fuck away from me! I'm selling pizza." <laughs> It's a twenty-five seat room. And it's I like, know they were. It's so, always about over the door, a seat room. But, but like during those arguments, was definitely in the multiple sold-out shows a night stage of that show. Sell that it. club. Yeah, it was already during that. Wow. So it was like you don't have to bury everybody, man. It's fine. And by the way, it's like if they're poaching your line, it goes. No one's poaching your line. Everybody knows the comedy seller is. If somebody goes, the 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 con, what's yeah. the the village lantern, not the village lantern. What's it called the comedy. Underground? No, what's it called? Voice? The, with the G. Village Guardian? <laughs> the Village Guardian. No, Dustin Chafin runs it, doesn't he? It's like, it's like on that street. It's like right down the street from the cellar again. I was like, Greenwich Comedy Club. Greenwich. What's, what's, what's Village then? Uh, There was Village Lantern. I don't know if that's even still a thing. Yeah, but okay. But this was this is a place. Greenwich just, Comedy Club, yeah. Greenwich Comedy Club. It's like yeah, that's still there. Yeah, it's still there. I don't know how many people that holds, but they're always like they'd always have a thing like uh, they're on the corner like selling tickets or whatever. I go if somebody wants to go to the cellar, dude, they're going to the cellar. Yeah, like let them stay on the street and and push their five dollar show. But also like it's it's cheesy or it's like it's like classless. It's like it's our block. It's like yeah, but it's a block. It's a, it's a sidewalk. You can't control. It. Stop. Just don't even worry about it. Yeah, and it's like well, they they're, mis- the they're misleading they're people. It's like they're misleading people. It goes, how much are they misleading people? Do? I mean, like, I'm not even saying they don't because I know a lot of them do. But like on those, like you're on the block with the place. Like if they genuinely fuck you, you can just go back to them or that club and be like, I want my money back for these tickets. So yeah, they, they told me it was like the comedy. What, what was the one? To, Sal- LOL used to always be like, well, so when's Chappelle going up? And we're like, what? <laughs> that told you that that Sal guy at one point though did like a real. Like using it was like the comedy basement or something. It was called, it was like supposed to sound like the cellar and like yeah. the logos were similar. So it was a real like fuck you like to that thing. <laughs> yeah, that guy is Sal Froyo. He dated Coppola for a while. No, who? Oh, Sal Froyo in 
Coplitz's like heyday. Yeah, dude. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. I love Lynn Coplitz. There's a. I would never want to get into a lover's tiff with her. No, she probably she'd hurt you. She'd hurt you. <laughs> she would hurt you. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Even younger Lynn Coplitz probably the claws came out. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah she used to take that sale. I forgot about that, dude. Sephora, what a what an odd couple in hindsight. Yeah. Wait, so let's get back to cops, though. Sure. So this chick left with him? What'd she do? The one outside the uh, cellar, by the way. Um, did they, they arrest him? They arrested the guy, yeah. They did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they arrested him. But he was really like, but he, he was like uh, yelling when they were putting him in the car, like yeah. at the cops and shit. Like, just no fear of anything, dude. I'm, I don't, I do not share that fucking thing. We were laughing the other day when... I mean, you were on the phone talking about even doing this was like the thing, the things I'm going to miss the most of it. And I go, it's the, the anger of the cop who has to do any work <laughs> of fighting someone resisting arrest. Like, what do you mean? Any amount of effort. When they run, chase them. Running a block particularly or like any kind of scuffle or the guy mm-hmm. trying to go into his pockets to like throw out drugs and tackling that and that whole scuffle. Whatever it is, the cops are always breathing heavy. And it couldn't matter. It doesn't matter what the crime. They're not in shape, shape. They're it, real. It, they're real cops. It makes sense. Some of them are in great shape, but yeah, but but a lot of them are but it, not. But it uh, it makes sense. That's a great soundtrack for this. Yeah. yeah. It what what? It makes sense <laughs> when they uh, when they have when they say this. They always complaining about how much effort you've made them go through and 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 put this whole thing through <laughs> for the uh, for the nickel bag of weed. They'll do it. It makes sense when they do that. They go all that man. All that for a little bit of weed in your pocket? Like, all that? I understand that. But they hate resisting arrest so much <laughs> and working for the arrest that they say all that for every single... It doesn't matter how terrible the crime is. It makes total sense. Like, all that. All that for a double homicide that you're good for. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking all about All that for, like- for a double homicide that we have surveillance footage of you committing. You're going to make me... You're gonna make me run all, like, all that. It's like, yeah, man, it's my freedom. I, yeah, I had a chance to be free if I got away. Yeah. yeah Why'd you run, dude? Or I was like, I thought I would get away. <laughs> <laughs> I thought saying, it was faster than you. They have the ones with the the they they a lot of times they find the clip. The These guys, I guess, will carry around like an extra clip for a gun. Uh-huh. But they they, <laughs> they 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 ditch the gun, and then they'll be sitting there, and they go, "I see you got the clip, man. Where's the gun?" Where's the gun? He's like, I ain't got no gun. He's like, you ain't got no gun? Why do you have this clip in your pocket? With a fully loaded magazine. He goes, found it. <laughs> and you just picked it up. Yeah, I'm stupid, huh? And then the guy will come over with the gun on a pencil or whatever, you know, so they don't touch it. He's like, I found the gun over here. He goes, why'd you lie to us, man? Why is that? It's like, what, what a stupid. Wait, do you not know why the would answer? you waste any time with that question? Put him in the car. Like, and again, that's hamming it up for TV. Why did you lie, man? He goes, I thought I got away with it. I really <laughs> thought I threw it I, far enough away that you guys were so lazy. It's wouldn't black get it. and it's night. Uh, I thought maybe <laughs> yeah. you know you wouldn't see it. Uh, uh, aren't you worried? Don't you know there's a lot of children in this neighborhood? He goes, wasn't really thinking about it at the time. You guys were chasing me. The lights were going. I figured I, had, I didn't want to go to jail, so I had to get yeah. rid of it. Wait, you guys know that the crime for having a gun is worse than not having a gun, right? <laughs> yeah. do, do you not all know? That. All that. All, all that. All that for a hot smoking gun <laughs> with extra barrels. Um, God, what a fucking show that was. Oh, uh, I would love the, the cameraman, 13 year old, too. The 13-year-old kids, they lift up his shirt and an entire, like, machine gun falls out of his basketball <laughs> shirt. Like a machine gun, dude. Wait, was that really on there? Yeah, oh, yeah. I've got a best of, in my head, always, of some of them. The machine gun falling out of the kids' pants. There's the great a great clip. 13-year-old kid-ish? It's like 13-year-old, like, 15, wow. maybe 15, like, uh, Hispanic kids, yeah. And they lift the shirt, and he's got a fucking, it's like, not a machine, you know, like a, like a Mac-10 or whatever, like, those kind of, like... Semi, you know, automatic machine guns. Yeah. It was fucking crazy. God yeah. damn. That's a great one. There's so many just hits. There's the, you can watch the whole rest in peace cops. I'll tell you this. What? You can go on. I believe, Is it available somewhere? I believe, I think so, but I, I'm pretty sure it will be. But there's a, there's a thing you can watch on. It can't be YouTube. Maybe it's daily motion or something. It's an old video. Yeah, but it's a compilation of the cops too hot for TV stuff that was pretty good too. All like the naked shit and oh, the fucking right. uh, like pretty wild stuff like that. I remember girl. that uh, uh, girls going wild too hot for TV also. Yeah, and in, well, all it, it always said it was too hot for was TV. That's why it was the, the the videotapes. 
So it was never on TV. Those were just commercials. But it said, but then they made ones that were like too hot for the ones we sell on TV. And those just, I think, went back to being kind of like fake porn. I bought it when I was younger, though. Did you really? My friend Brian did it all the time. He was like, this is crazy. Somebody Trends told me, though, how they do that. What? The Girls Gone Wild is the guy, the guy Joe Francis, told us that we, Craig Gass got us all finagled backstage to the anger management tour years ago, which was yeah. Papa Roach. Ugh. It was a weird tour. Papa Roach, Eminem. Yeah. And I can't remember who the other people were. It was the anger management tour it was called. It was, it was Eminem's tour, ultimately, but Papa Roach was on it for some reason. And uh, well, we were backstage. Who's saying, let's get Papa Roach on this, on this fucking tour? I don't know. We were backstage, uh, and just like Craig, like, finagled his way over, like, bullshitting with Joe Francis, and he was like, brought us on the bus. So creepy, first of all. Creepy dude, creepy environment he created, even with the girls. And I was like 22 or three, four, maybe. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, super excited to be backstage, super excited to be on the Girls Going Wild bus. I've, I, you know, fucking stiffed a credit card payment to to get one to buy those videos before you oh yeah for sure so i was like this is fucking amazing and then you just see what goes in the making same way i think i'd feel if i went and watched a porn get shot possibly i think i'd be like eh, i don't like this dude i saw one and it was that like you know what i mean the guy goes like you know stacy we're losing daylight are you gonna do this or what and it's like i'm sorry like, i'm talking you know it's like my back hurts or whatever like well we i don't we don't have all day like suck his cock and let's go <laughs> i'd be like this isn't sexy at all and uh, it was my worst same- part was going to the bathroom to pee and seeing like just a bunch of douches in there. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, ugh. yeah. Would Yoshi take you on one? Could have been. It was probably Yoshi. Yeah. Looking back, but yeah. Um, but we were on the bus and just like his weird go at the girls, like to get him to do stuff, is very. He had a black eye, first of all, which is funny. Joe Francis. Yeah. And he was just go very weird with the girls, but. What they did say to us at the time was, I'm like, how do, is there reality to the thing where it's like you get like girls sucking cock? in dance clubs on Mardi Gras and some of them getting fucked in the back in Mardi Gras and all that stuff. I go, is that real? He goes, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've used this on stage before, not like, on concept, not what he said. But he goes, we bring a ringer uh, in, like a girl is going to go in there and like suck a guy's dick or maybe we suck a guy who we brought stick. But once a girl starts, drunk girl, let's put this in the drunk people. I don't just say this about women right. in general. But something like a drunk girl uh, in that kind of club atmosphere or something like that, it just sets the line. And if one girl's sucking dick, another girl's like, I can fucking suck dick better than that. And then just like some, not every girl, a bunch of girls will be like, ew, this is fucking gross. But just the girls that will do that now will do it. Wow. Versus like no one's like, I'm not going to be the first person to start sucking dick. The same thing with the mask. People are like, everyone's wearing masks. I'm like, oh, is he not? Are we not wearing masks? Do we not have to wear masks? (laughs) Instantly from a, you have to. Like, oh, do we not have to? Yeah, exactly. So it's like they they bring in a ringer to do that. Wow. So so the stuff is real. The stuff is real, but they bring in like ringers to get, yeah, it's like it's it's finagled to get uh, people jumping in on that. And I'll tell you, that's a great way to do it. That's an honest way to get people to do it. Yeah. And I saw it happen once at the comic strip years ago. It was so funny. Like, some girl in the front row was talking about her titties or whatever obnoxious thing I was doing. And uh, whatever. But she was very like, they were out there. And she was very like, oh, I, I fucking, yeah, I love them. And I was like, oh, that's great. Go, Do you like love them? Like, like you want the world to see them? You could pull them out. Like, this is an adult club. We could totally take a look at them. She goes, I'm not pulling my titties out in front of all these people at a comedy club. I go, oh, okay. I'm just, they're almost out. So I thought you did want to show them. I go, you don't show them at all. And some girl goes, what a prude. Like, I'll fucking show my tit. And this girl just pulled her titties out at another table. F- less than five seconds later, that girl at the front table pulled her titties out. And then a third girl in the what? back pulled her titties out too. And I go, there is no disease more contagious than whore. That's what I said. <laughs> because that's always like, once, if there's someone who likes attention like that, and one person does, you go, oh, we could do that? Oh, oh yeah, we're doing we're it. fucking. Dude, if I had a dick that touched my fucking knee, and yeah. it was like any joke where it was like, time to pull dicks out, I'd be like, I know, right? We'll pull dicks. I goes, nah, we're not going to, you know. And then you put it back away, but I would pull it actually out. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that girl who took her shirt off at your show? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I, what's your fucking deal? <laughs> what's your fucking deal? Yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a weird. She had a very odd reaction. It was the night after, or what it was, the, it was during the, 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 Me Too? The peaceful riots of Me Too of Trump getting elected and all the women who went marching. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. It was before he got elected. 
Or is the night? Nice, I think you got to let me in, take an officer. I mean, the fact that we were recording a, a fucking crowd work show the day relies after, on the audience. No, the night of we watched of the it biggest happen upset in the green in the, room, in the bubble of New York's history. We wa- we were in the green room of that show while other comic everyone welcome to the stage, Bonnie McFarlane, and I'd go in the back and we're looking. and I'm going, no, no way, dude, is this fucking happening? And I'd go on stage and asking people not to look at their phones don't look at your phones please it's guys. gonna ruin it we'll ta- and then i go just don't no, go just don't follow it because like the, it didn't officially end until we were done you gotta wait for hawaii i think <laughs> yeah but like yeah exactly it was like something <laughs> it was like, like that, it's over it, right? it was looking bad but like and you could just see people like you could just see like eyes looking down like under their tables like fine and you're like guys please like we need the audience is so important to this yeah. show like particularly it's like we need you to interact. Like you, you can't be like, "Hey, what's that shirt?" And then it's like, "Huh?" And we're talking. Who are you talking? Like, what's wrong? Goes. You just took Missouri. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Please stop looking at your phone. <laughs> just terrible timing. Didn't even think of it when we were booking. Just never thought about election day. I still. Now we will. I think November is our next fucking thing. Talk about time you want to start filming what? cops. Uh, November is going to be a nightmare in New York. A fucking train wreck nightmare. What it's do you gonna, mean? In terms of what? All protests are going to come back. Tenfold. Protests are gonna come Tenfold. Back. Yeah. Uh two, Trump's gonna win. It's so, possible. So I think it's just a definite thing. I mean again, I'm I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm not certainly I'm rooting for the fucking Dude, guy. It's, but we're I just such say, a bubble like, that like, these people can't these people here, us, can't see a way that anyone likes him, which means it's very possible. We just don't get it. It's just, we just don't get it because there's people in this country. I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know anybody on who's, no yeah. one's amped up about Biden. Nobody. No one's juice. No one's like. I don't. I, I barely know. Any, yeah. I barely know anything about the guy other than the things people complain about. Him. They say he's like seems old and a little batty. You can't spell Biden without den. And I heard he's got a lovely den. <laughs> One of those globes that opens up and then it's a bar. Ooh. God, you got to visit Biden's den. You got to see Biden. <laughs> he's also into by days. Yeah. <laughs> No, nobody's fucking. You hear people try to get juiced on it too, and like, no, he's great. You know, he did this, this, and you're like, you want to be like, you just read that. Yeah, he was, <laughs> you just no, read it. A, he was a, uh, he played a uh, little college ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that one of those talking points? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's his platform, this guys? Uh, I think he's a family man first and foremost. Uh, but he's, uh, yeah, I think Trump's just gonna fuck him because the, the here's what he does. It's smart. <clears throat> I, I. I Equated this to Lewis. Here's why you're a better father than he is. Kept your kid alive. That's true. You want another beer? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, go ahead, go ahead. But I'll tell you another thing with uh, that uh, Lewis has, and it's not a bad thing. It's a it's it's a choice to make, and I think it's uh, admirable to do it because you got to have thick skin to do it. And I, and I think Lewis does on on this account. If you're gonna be the guy who just fucking rages all the time at, at the shit and not play ball at all do you know what i mean yeah like you're going to make a lot of people do you know what i mean in the wake of somebody going like hey dude tonight's tonight like let's just with all the stuff going on like let's not make a black joke do you know what i mean like, with all this going on like, publicly you know what i mean like, i know this we're laughing at this now but but and lewis is more of a person i'm not saying he will always do it 100 percent of the time but he's at least thinking about involved, but he was like he's gonna fucking go for it because his thing is like well some people are gonna be like fuck you you piece of shit but if he nails it it's worth it. Um, but if, right, you'll fuck you piece of shit, but exactly, if he fucking nails it. So the one guy's like, oh my God. It's like, well, that's that's well, priceless. Oh, I'm saying not even the one, but the thing is like, you actually have a fleet of people who are looking for that. that thing. That's why I've had people say to me, it always makes me laugh because I'm like, well, that's not really how I look at it, but okay. Yeah. I'm like, dude, more rape jokes, more of that. What do you need? You want, you done with that one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like more rape jokes, more fucking racist oh, yeah, exactly. jokes like, oh, you're, like, you're, like, you're like well that's not really like I'm not really looking for that in my yeah. shit. like I have I, I, I don't I do all those subjects if they come up like I don't I, don't, I love like, that's what people always do it's like oh you can't be funny without doing a rape joke or, or it used to be oh you can't be funny without being dirty and it's like no, yes I can I just not for that joke <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> yeah you, I, I have more than one joke up here yeah that that one was the dirty one that was a dirty <laughs> one right there but yeah so it's uh I don't necessarily. I do. And like I said, like, I eat shit on the internet for that sometimes too. Like, dude, you're such a fucking pussy. And whether someone was telling me the other day, it's like, dude, ten years ago you were whatever. It's like ten years ago you didn't even know me. Yeah. One and two. Like ten years ago I was what? Like not as good as a, a comic. And it's like I still 
say all kinds of outlandish shit on Legion of Skanks, and I, but everything I say, like, I'd be willing to defend. So there, I, I'm just saying there are things to me that I'm like, well, how can I defend that if I say that? It's not funny. Right, if, I, right. if I go, it's not really funny. So if I'm just trying to see if I can, do, do you know what I mean? Like, if it was excessive, if I was just like, all day today, I'd keep going. If I, I go, I'm going to keep saying like, Ari, what's up, nigga? Oh, nigga, you got to hear this story. And you just, after a while, people would be like, what's he, is he doing? Is he doing that? It? Yeah. A lot of comics do that. They get right. that heat and off like, and some backlash, and they get those people going like, do it again. Like, I will. And it's like, and that's not. Yeah, it's just like, to me, it's like, well, it's just not, it's not funny enough. I go, yeah. Tell me, the, the, fa- tell me the joke. Like it's right. Tell me the joke or the thing we're gonna do using the word that makes me fucking gutless. And 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 by the way, Lewis finds that often. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not debating that at all. Some of my favorite, uh, most heinous things uh, said have been from Lewis that I would defend to the fucking teeth and nails. So I'm not even. I'm just saying, like, I almost admire his willingness to just be like, dude. Some of them are gonna hate you, but everybody else will worship. You know, in the in our presidential campaign, yeah. Like, How's Lewis it going? could fucking. I, mean, I don't know. Like, I I, I, don't, I don't even think I'm funny, but like, Lewis is like uh, has the people that are fucking like jump in front of trains for him. You know what I mean? So you're like, his people might come out where my people are gonna more be like people that would vote for me are a little more like, oh, I forgot to vote for Jay. Ah, well, that's oh like, yeah, no, he's got like, all his fucking go bots. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, he's. Uh, but that's an interesting way to play it. I kind of admire that to some degree too. You go for, it. and I said Trump. That's what Trump oh. has subtly done. That's done right there. Uh, not like uh, you know he's not a uh, 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 talented as what Lewis is doing. I'm just saying what we don't see is you like don't see it. we don't live in the place where they're at. But there's places in this country where they are like they would fucking like lay down for this guy and, and fucking oh, yeah. and let right. him walk on like, their I don't get it. What could you like about him? It's like okay, so people do like him. So what you're saying is right. You don't get it. Yeah. I, I'm not sure I do either, but like y- you got to assume there's a reason. So don't just act like it's not happening. He just knows how to go. Yeah, he, fucking might coal. he, goes he the, might fucking win. He goes to the coal mines and he goes, you guys will have jobs forever. You guys are going to have jobs. And they're like, fuck, fuck yeah, yeah dudes. And then he also goes, and I'm not really that worried about the cops hurting black people. They're like, oh, we don't give a shit either, dude. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that Samuel Huff jobs forever. That's our nightmare. We'd be like, no, I hate work. <laughs> um, you know what? A good prank. How about this? When they're marching in Union Square, uh, because I was on the drive up here. We, we went through like Eastern Maryland, like whatever. There was a bunch. There was a bunch of Trump banners on on lawns. Mm-hmm. You know, which is whatever. Uh, but I'm like, you can't have that in Manhattan. No, no, dude. you couldn't even have it. Forget about someone saying disagree. They yell at you they egg your place so the stand right near Union Square next time they have a fucking protest you put a giant I love Trump banner <laughs> and then you just watch that it thing burn cork. Yeah. <laughs> any place you hate just uh, Trump make America yeah. great Trump's again. life matters it, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Trump's the only life that matters just put that up and then I'm like only burn it down one thing that matters Trump's life <laughs> Um, I do. I said I scarily think he's going to win again, which means four more means nightmarish years. Bad. Four more nightmarish years on so many levels now, more. Now we know if there's major crisis, he's terrible at handling it. And yeah. we know that if, uh, you know, it's going to make, again, and when the dust settles on stuff like COVID and whatever, which it will, and the world goes back to normal, it's, it's going to go right back to like, they're going to be like, okay, we're all not going to die. Okay, those cops hopefully are in prison. Like, let's hope to God those cops are in prison. He goes, okay. Now, who's saying disparaging jokes about women? <laughs> and you're like, oh, Fuck no. Off. I thought we were done that. He goes, no, we need to get pissed about something, man. It's going to be. And, Trump, and if Trump's in office, same, it's going to go right back to like that. It's like, hey, you really think it's funny? Add each other's That a woman should make a thing. I goes, I give a woman everything, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Stop yelling at me. <laughs> Half my salary goes to one of you fucking assholes. <laughs> I don't fucking care. Just go. <laughs> that was a great thing on the. Uh, the test we both took, the privilege test. The privilege test. What'd you get? Interesting. I got a 44, not privilege. Not That's privilege. Right. Um, but on the privilege test, the questions, there were some good technicalities in there. And we talked about them the other day. One of the technicalities we didn't talk about, yeah. one of the things goes, they're basically asking, this is a way of asking, are you a woman? But, they go, are, have you, do you feel that you have not gotten the same opportunities of work and the same, uh, at the same, uh, Technicality, like, ju- like the, same, the, same, the same judgment of your of your not material, but that's what I was thinking. But same judgment of your work uh, because of your gender. Have you been? I was like, and you're like, yeah, I was like, absolutely. I've uh, being a, a white dude over the last whatever years. In has comedy, been a it's all flipped. In comedy. It's all flipped. A burden in comedy. I have on behalf of 
via common comedy central told a man comic that like hey man you're quite good enough to book this if you had a vagina i could book you <laughs> yeah. but you don't you have a dick and the wrong color at that so i'm letting you know that's the reason you're not getting this job you got that about, you definitely need because you're a young struggling comic you got a week before we film if you want to suck a cock or something yeah, that's that's just something. do something here, start dude. chugging balls chop it whatever <laughs> you're in if you chop it you chop it. Same level of story. <laughs> you, if chop, you chop you're it. the headliner. <laughs> you are <it>. Yeah. <laughs> chop it. <laughs> like, how come only men? Ah! Timmy chopped it. Listen, see if they'll save it on ice. <laughs> Go back and get it put back on. But if you want to be on this particular show, I am sorry to tell you. <laughs> yeah. That's like the guy. Have you ever been called a faggot? And you're like, so many times by my friends. And it's just funny when you, when you look at the thing. And the thing is, you have to do it to some degree. But it's just like. You know, when you look at like, like a skank fest, like watching skank fest get booked and stuff, yeah. and, and then you see Christine them as producers, they're not doing it to be, they're right. doing it to uh, 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 avoid things. Like we booked the show, and it's like, oh God, do we have enough like black women or women or black men performing or gay or whatever like this? And it's just like, if we get the funniest fucking people, it's, man, like, it's, it's, it, it's just like, but I'm not just that, like, if you get the funniest people, like, I'm not saying it's going to even out like, you know, 10 to 10 to 10 to 10. But like... But look at roulette there's wheel. Going to look be... at a roulette wheel. It's not 10 red, 10 black. It's right. 12 and 8 and then 8 and 12. And then it's just like... Yeah. It, it, there's some ups and downs. That's what I'm saying. It's just like... So it's like there's going to be gay people at Skankfest, man. Like just by booking friends and the funniest people. Like it's going to happen. Yeah. There's going to be black... You don't have to go... How many black people do we have? Like... Uh -huh. Four twenty. Like, I'm not even them? thinking about 15? it. Really. Yeah. Fifteen. Like, who? I didn't think about it, but we definitely have a funny show. My <laughs> assumption would be there's the representation of black people there <laughs> performing. My thing is, we had a. I, I'm sure I've talked about this. We had a blog written about us early, early on, and it was like you had no women, and then Safer was just like we had seven. Yeah. And like, oh, really? I'm like, yes, seven. Way more than zero. I'm like, oh well, still not enough. Like, you thought zero wasn't enough. Yeah, we had a couple things with Skankfest. Like, you don't book enough women. I was like, oh my God, man. Like, it's just like enough. Also, it's like. It's run by just women. Just go fucking promote a woman. Quit shitting on the people who don't. Go promote one. That's what I loved about Germany. Everyone's fucking pushing the shit they like. No yeah. one's like, you do a thing I don't like. They're not even worried about that. They're like, oh, you built boats. Let me fucking. That's, show me. That's so cool. Ugh. Fuck people, yeah. My thing is, you just got to look harder. Yeah. They're out. They're. <laughs> Miss Pat, she's yeah. not in L.A., so she's not on a fucking checklist of fucking people. That's right. Full Ollie, circle. Ollie Sadiq. Did you see Miss Pat's fucking cops? No, is she on cops? Yes. As really? like a kid. Yeah. Really? Yeah, as a dealer. No. Yes. Oh, you got to go have... and look at it. Have you not seen it? Never seen it before. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's on like YouTube? 15, 16. She's put it out like it's on YouTube? I don't know. I've seen it, but I don't remember where I saw it. Maybe it was... So if you Google it, it must come up if you saw it. It must, right? You don't think you just happened to see it and notice it was Miss Pat. I, I, I mean, I've seen the Miss Pat fight, and that won't leave her phone. The Miss, Miss Pat fight? Yeah, her just beating an open micer's ass. Really? Yeah, but it's, you can't. Bad? It's not up anywhere. It's just. <laughs> Is it a beating? <laughs> She's so fucking tough. Really? <laughs> she, this guy's heckling her. I don't know how big. I feel like, like she doesn't move very good. Like, yeah, probably. She's but a, she, she fucking big, ripped her uh, wig off and was like, come on. Really? And he was like, <laughs> so fucking. She, got, she beats he just, him a dude? He just comes up to say something. I think maybe a crackers, maybe somewhere else. I don't know. But he, the guy was like, yeah, and he stepped on the stage. And that was aggression enough. She didn't have to wait for him to push her or anything like that. He was like, yeah, just boom. Wow. Punches him and knocks him up and off the stage. Where does she live now? What? Where does she live? Um, I think Indy. Indianapolis, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you should I should, yeah, I, should, I should text her. Yeah. For sure. I there guarantee ain't... you she's up for some Taco Bell. There ain't no way she's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there maybe she'll ask her to show you the fight. Oh, dude, it's fucking glorious. I want to see it so bad, for sure. Oh, I'm excited I'm going out to see Miss Pat. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> fucking funny, yeah. The kids that were on there were pretty fucking great. She beats the guy up? Oh, yeah, he's done. He's done insult. He was, he was all show. He would as as if me going up there. Like, what are you gonna do? Did he try to fight her back? It was over. He had no heart. He he was never going to. He was trying to show that he was tough, like Kubiak. But when they found out he could never fight, oh yeah. And it was just like, there's just no way. There was no. It it wasn't gonna happen. He was acting tough, and she was. She'd been shot in the fucking titty. 
Yeah. She's been on cops. I, I, on the wrong I, side of it. I have to find that out. Um, yeah, the the abusive forgiveness on that show is is fantastic. I never seen that there were Americans like that. I grew up in I don't know where you grew up, but that to me was like so foreign. There could be a guy holding a beer late at night with a shirt off, just like well, just talking to the, like not trying to. It was just they're such crazy type of people. I had friends of family and family that were like kind of like it was all over the place but like we grew up yeah. urban urban i did i yeah. mean like in philly in west philadelphia so like it was definitely an urban community you know what i mean it wasn't like uh i guess they had like keggers and shit in the woods i was never there oh. for that wait black people or white people that's white people uh both oh well that's we, nice we, like, like that they like just woods drinking and stuff like that for sure but like uh yeah, I, I never got into any of that, so it's like I kept it all kind of the urban area. I mean, I'd go to the parks and everything, climb Indian Rock. That was the big thing. Uh, <laughs> if you ever go back to my old neighborhood in Philly, I'll show you Indian Rock. Okay. You climb it. <laughs> um, it's a fun climb. What is it? Mountain? Just a big rock and like uh, out in the creek. It's like a creek thing. It's like Philadelphia's woods. It was all okay. like kind of small woods, but like enough to go do stuff in and shit, you know? But uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yeah, I grew up uh, pretty urban, but like it was. My mom just had a lot of friends though that echoed a lot of that white trip. Just guys, really? just beer koozie dudes and stuff that like, you know, guys that had guts but were very tan because <laughs> they were shirtless a lot, even though they had guts. But it's it's a gut that's like flat and then out kind of thing. Yeah, not yeah, like a burnt yeah, it's gut. Not like, but like it's not like it's 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 just belly completely. They're not like jiggly fat guys. It's just like a hard ball of a gut. Yeah, like those kind of guys wrap around uh, wrap around sunglass like tans. You know what I mean? Yeah, that the the tan. Did you grow up with the fucking rat tail? I had was a rat tail. Like, yeah, you had one. No, I didn't have a rat tail. Dyed it blonde and braided it. <laughs> Used my. Use my uh, braces. You know the rubber bands that go on your braces. Uh, I use those to to tie them. To tie them, like boom, 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 boom. No, no, no. I would braid it and then tie it at the bottom so it stayed braided. Dude, I, there's nothing like comedy that bring, we should never ha even have crossed paths, let alone no, become yeah, friends. Yeah. That's great. No, I know. I love that. I love it also because there's 75 sides to everybody. And part some, of your look or whatever is is one of your do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you find you have like so much more in common with somebody. That's just adult shit, though. Honestly, it really is. Just like that adult you find things. common commonalities. You wouldn't even think. Yeah, I don't know, think I had like. I guess to a degree, at some point, I dressed like when I went like with dressing sort of like hip hop when I was younger, because like it was the best option for fat kids. Yeah. Um, I dressed. I dressed like a lot of people. Do you know what I'm saying? But, like, uh, I, I never, like, overthought, like, how anybody... I just kind of dressed, like, what the time said to dress like. Because you're like, I just want... I'm going to blend in. Yeah, more or less, you know Ugh, what I mean? That's the who best you blended you in with? Huh? That's who you blended in with? Yeah, well, it was, like I said, the, the choices at the... You know, you uh, tell that story. The choices at Big and Tall at the time. Now, Big and Tall's got, like... No, it's normal. It's like the normal thing. It's but like it was a, really a nice like... button-down shirt you can get, you know, but like, not even nice, just like, you know throw around button down shirt flannels or whatever or t-shirt but back then it was like a stereotype of the most embarrassing thing like you'd have to go in there and be like hey do you guys know how to get to the i5 from here Can I just, oh, i'll come in and talk to you and then just then shop <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Was, but, and, then, and all your choices were like just rock aware fubu oh, right. all those clothes they, that was the name brand shit and then everything else besides that was like clothes that like a fat dad wears so <laughs> you just dress kind of like well it makes sense to go with the hip-hop shit because if i got a it's, <laughs> it's not a derby hat <laughs> Say what was worse what would have been a worse look is dressing like the way like my heart was like i would get jealous when i'd see kids i always use this example too but it's such a true thing i always wanted one of the three quarter length sleeve uh like baseball like the baseball shirt oh, yeah. of uh I have of one of those the led zeppelin you know the angel okay i don't it, it really it's such a popular like uh maybe i do swan song i think it is uh, if you do a Led Zeppelin swan song. There was so you, you've seen this logo on a T-shirt before, and uh, that I used to fucking. But if I put those on, like, see, seeing the fat kid wearing the uh, fat kid like wearing like a rock T-shirt that's tight around his tits. Oh yeah, it's and then like sure. a too tight of a denim jacket and jean. You know what I mean? Like the stuff that I always would have liked to just kind of pull off. Yeah, you couldn't pull it off. 
I just never even thought. I was just like, I don't want to be fat. Like, uh, and you know what I mean? Like, I, it's better. If, in my mind, I was like, I could wear baggy hip hop shit. It's also better shit. to call less attention to yourself. Yeah. I was like, I could wear baggy hip hop shit yeah. and look like everybody Blend else. So just like, I'll be the bigger kid, but like, we're all dressed as I'm not, I'm not wearing clothes that are too tight for me. But if I wanted to wear like t shirts from the mall and like, you know, stuff that I just can get, like. Yeah. As a fat kid, you don't want to be like, you want to dress like Ricky limited. Velez. Where you're like people right. looking at you more. You're right. You look fucking absolutely ridiculous. You wouldn't look fashionable. You'd be like, what are you doing? Right. You can only get away with that if you're a gay fat kid. Gay fat kids can wear all kinds of tight shit. They can do anything. Gay fat kid and gay Latino are the best gays. Mm-hmm. Prove me wrong. I won't even take a shot at proving me wrong. <laughs> um, um, was there violence in cops? Yeah. Do you remember well, it? One, uh, there's been some definitely violence. Yeah. It seems like they're trying to brag for the cameras with it. A, a little bit. Yeah. I've seen, like I said, a lot of fights. The most compelling thing ever that I saw on that show one time, I saw yeah. the episode, and then it's been like, there was a 2020 episode recently about a follow up on the story, and it's been like, I think a documentary about the story, but it was from an episode of Cops, of all things. Yeah. What? Dahlia DiPolito. That was from Cops? Do you know who that is? The Black Dahlia. Uh, the one who tried to have her husband killed. Yes. Yeah, she's a hero of mine. It's from Cops, dude. Wait, no. We use a clip, uh, a bonfire no, has a drop undercover- of, her, of her hearing the news when she goes, uh, when he goes, huh? Miss, your husband has been killed. She goes, ah, ah. It's, She's such a good actress. Come here. Come here right now. Come As soon as she, if you don't know the setup, you would not know she's faking. If oh, you don't know oh, the yeah, setup, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would be like, mm-hmm. wow, look what grief looks like. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's not like, yeah, I'm sorry. It, where you know, you would be like, oh, this is what people go through when they, when they. But I saw the cops episode first and foremost. Wait, sh- how was there a camera there? What do you mean, cops? That's an undercover thing. Uh, they had a camera. <laughs> they had a camera on it for sure. Like they show. I mean, you can see that thing of her crying when she finds out. Like, I'm sorry to inform you that uh, it my might thing be, it with Dahlia Del Polito is well, okay. For, it shows two married things. Married to Mike Vecchione. <laughs> it shows two things. Story. One, that you would rather have your husband killed. This is how awful annoying conversations just are. just say you want to break up with then, him. Yeah, then just to do that. It's well, easier found, just to have him killed. They found some stuff recently, And the way though, she's like, do you want to get some donuts? They found some stuff recently, though. That, like I didn't even know the other shit she did. Before she tried to have him killed, the 2020 really dug into it pretty good. She uh, planted drugs on him to have, and called the cops and said that he had, that he had drugs on him. And then, by the way... The cops just didn't check where she planted them. And then you, they showed, like, text from him to her. He was like, what? Hey, he goes, he goes, I just opened my, he goes, I just opened my gas tank to get gas. And there was, a, a like, a you know an ounce of Coke <laughs> like in you my just found phone. Him? Like, yeah, he goes, what is this? And she's like, I don't know. I don't know why that's there. Like, he found it. He got pulled over, and the cops checked his car for drugs. He's like, I don't do drugs. And they checked his car and let him go because there was no drugs. And he didn't know where she had hid them. He was like, sure, check my car. I don't do drugs. And that they checked the whole car, but they didn't check inside the the glass thing for some reason. Where she put it, it was like wow. in the in the, in the wow. cap thing. She's so crazy and so so fucking committed to her goal, though. Still, so she uh, got pregnant while uh, like 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 right before they officially arrested her. She fucked somebody else. She was doing it to be with another guy. She was telling so that's another what it guy. Was. She was telling another Instead guy. Instead of just saying no, but here's the thing: it was about money, though. He had some okay, dough, that's what and it was. she was trying to get his dough. Yeah. But here's what I was saying. Two things. That one, where, where it's like it shows you how much people avoid confrontation in general like that. Uh, and two, so the cops just could have arrested her. Why did they have to set the whole thing up? of like, okay, <laughs> husband, dead? husband, listen, we're coming in. Your, husband, your wife's trying to have you killed. And he's like, what? He's like, your wife's trying to have you killed. I don't have time. We got to fucking prank her. Like, why? just arrest her. It's like, we got to get you out of here. So we're going to say you're dead just to get the yeah, real reaction. There's no more evidence they got from her. What they do know, though, is when you show that in court. Yeah. It's going to make a jury really be like, what fuck a fucking her. bitch, dude. Wow. Because when they like your husband been killed and she's like, what? You see the cop. No, no, in she her go- mind, she paid a guy to kill him. So he's dead. He's dead. And she cries and puts her head in the guy in the cop's chest and he like you see the cop I won't have that like all right I'll play along because he's like annoyed like he's like she just tried to have somebody killed and I'm a policeman. Do you remember the fan, the thing? I'm 5,000% sure that's what she said to the cop or not the cop no, what? it wasn't even a cop by the way that undercover thing wasn't a cop 
that guy when she said will you uh kill my husband will you kill my husband right the guy was like uh the guy who said like the guy who said i'll get you somebody uh he went to the cops so like a guy and he like, was recording said, it yeah, so that's why you, like, it's, it's, but you know her, you know her, her argument was what she said it was was that they were all taking part in an audition for uh to try to get on a reality TV show. That was her defense the first time around, her first trial. Her defense was that she she's two a, trials? Huh, yeah. She what on what grounds does she appeal the verdict of guilty? Uh, I I don't know. I don't remember exactly what it was, honestly, but like he uh but yeah, she was. She tried to say that we were all doing a reality show, and then it's like, well, for this audition tape, why was the camera like in the back seat, like behind? You couldn't see anybody's face except yours, really. Why yeah, would what, that, that be? What kind of audition is that? Where we don't want to see a reaction. Grainy, shitty audio, video. Like, what are you talking about? And they just, they just went with it. They're like, that's what we had, man. <laughs> so we had to take a shot. Her lawyer was like, it's a, ha- it's a half court shot. It's not my best. It's not my best opportunity. But time yeah. is running out. What do you want what, me to do? What do you want? Yeah, they really had like a. <laughs> it is what it is, man. We can't just. Say yes. <laughs> I, my th- also, what I loved is her- I love the cops brought that to to my life because I love that story. Wow, I love how she went to the husband too. It was like Mark, come in here. Mark, come here. They show me. Go, it's not what it is, Mark. They, they go, and she's rec- like, I've seen it. Do you recognize this guy? And she goes, Come here now. She doesn't. Uh, that's where her acting she- stopped. It, it all fell apart there because that's where her acting stopped. Because she, at that point, she should have fainted. Because like you told me he was dead or, or got up and like 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 she was started doing she knew that she was fucked and she was like but she, Mark, she's get such get me out of this you need su- to get me out of this such she a hot, she's such a hot bitch that she's I've like I've fallen for exactly that on so many occasions right, she was she was look I know I tried to fuck you over but she was right now tell them this is all fucking you knew about this and let's get the fuck like she thought if I get him alone. I can control this dumbass because he thinks I'm hot and wants to fuck me still, and like he thinks he can keep me. So it's like I'll I'll play and, and, and I'll tell you what she got him in a room alone. She probably could have. She probably could. That's why I hated about the last six and jump watch was that David Paymer guy going, "Don't do this, don't do this." He would know what to say to her, yeah, to get her to not do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't do. Yeah, exactly. He'd be like, "Baby, you know I love you." You know, I love something like that. But just that, he goes, you know, remember what your father was doing to you? And I and I was there for you. I was there exactly. for you. When so you're like, oh, maybe. You just know. to play that guilt. The same. That she was, was the, doing that. That, that was you. the move. That was the the crazy. When that, when that female judge stops him, the guy who molested the Larry Nasser, Dr. Larry Nasser, the guy who molested the whole. Uh, put him in jail. The Olympics. Mm-hmm. But not that. When he so gets to his make his final statement. And she said, I saw him. He kept like he was on microphone facing the judge but as he was reading the comments Larry Nasser, yeah Larry Nasser, he kept turning around and like swinging his eyes across the whole room and looking at the girls and by the second time he did the judge goes stay forward please and then they interview the judge and she goes yeah I know exactly what he's doing like he's got these girls he's got something in them so much you could see it happening when he turned around to their face he just has something in them so much that he knew by turning around and, and giving his whiny like I'm just Dumb, ugly Larry. You know, like he played all that with them. He didn't act like a cool guy with them. You know what I mean? He was more of like a. He knows wow. that he was a dweeb. Do you know what I mean? So he played the like, I'm so sorry for what I did to you. And try, and he could see some of the girls starting to feel that like, oh man, this guy's such a pathetic, like fucking loser. He's going to get fucked in his ass and, you know, like t- taking pity on him. And that's why she was like, eyes forward, Mr. Nasser. Like, don't fucking look back at them again, like at all. Like, you're trying, like, you still wow. have the clutch and you're, you're still manipulative enough to be like, wow, let me go make them feel bad before I get out of here. Ugh. And he said you could start seeing the girls' faces where they were crying like, oh, man, like this sad sex going like to go to like jail him. for the rest of his life. Wow. Not even you like him, but it's just like he still goes like, "I'm." people feel bad for me too. And it's like, dude, you're a villain. You're like, not just like a rapist. You're like a, the record rapist. Dude, those girls would say, that's the wildest one to me. He was so like diabolical and evil that he would like, how he got him to agree to it was the first time he would do it. He just had a... a his office or whatever set up in a way that the parents would like wait over there and he'd be talking to them while he's examining her quote unquote and like fingering a a little girl he did that so they'd hear it's like i'm doing this in front of your parents in in, in their mind like you're doing from it so it must he must not be lying this must be like procedural how this works so then he could like when the parents weren't there he could really like take his time and play with their put and called it he called it the reset button like if they had a it would be like he had these there's children. So he goes, if your knee is bad or your ankle's bad, like I if I go in there and like play with your pussy, he told me it was like fix your ankle and shit. 
crazy, dude. And then said all those years later, these girls are adults now, a bunch of them. He's like turning around and look at them like, I can't believe the horrible things. And she's like, turn the fuck around, asshole. What are you fucking wow. doing? You like, know about you the just, rabbi in my community? You can't who lose was... that evil, man. That, yeah. it, it, there's, there's some people who are just wired fucking And they're trying to be like, no, terrible. I was just like, this rabbi in my community, he was, you know, the, there's a ritual bath that chicks have to go into? Yeah. Passover or not Passover, Yom Kippur, like when they get married or whatever after their periods. But uh, he drilled a hole in the wall and was watching them. Mm-hmm. Taking their robes off and fucking dipping, and 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 he would have to do like practice dips with like new converts. Like, let's get you practicing the dip. And they're like, what's the practice? And then the, those girls would tell him, he was like, no, I've done I've done a few practice dips, but now it's time to do it alone. Like, what do you mean? It's always you just like go in the water and come out. Yeah. What <laughs> practice? Who'd you practice with? They're like the rabbi. Like what? He just got out of jail. That guy, seven years really? in prison. He just got out. Seven. That's it, huh? It was like it, he never touched anybody. Yeah. It's weird, but it's such a betrayal. And of it wasn't trust. children. No, it was, it was like, but it also was like thirty-six-year-old housewives, yeah. like, like just pent up, dude. Those guys get all pent up. Said so you don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure it stems from the other people when people become like uh, maybe not rabbis. I'm not even sure like the actual path of that. But you know, that's the priests that go Leaders. fucking the priests that go so fucking wonky. It's just like there's some reason you put yourself in a world where you can't fuck. No, no, that's an exact reason. So you're trying to stop yourself from doing like the. So it's it's the heterosexual ones that like the the. the the line, okay? Mm-hmm. I want to have sex with women, but I can't because of God. So that's like this, the baseline. Right. What if what you like is already looked down on by your religion? Mm-hmm. So you're like, let me go to a place where I'm not allowed. Right. Just like those heterosexuals are not allowed to do what they want. I like boys. And then they feed you boys. Or, or men. <laughs> right. And, right. And then it's like, I like boys. But then it's like, oh, there's other ones here. And they figured out a way around it. Yeah, but that Nasser guy was fucking crazy. But yeah, that, that Dahlia uh, DiPolito. God, she, she fucking- was cops. Yeah, the show fucking cops brought that to light. That, that they did this thing. That's so nutty. Wow. She she's one. Of, I'm yeah, sure they go, they, go and they wake him up. They go, sir, your wife was paying. You go, what? Do you think she's <laughs> still in jail? She is. We the 2020 thing just came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it did. I was gonna just say like we should go interview her. Yeah, she is. Uh, is she still in jail? Let me look that up real quick. Is she? Tr- might, what, she how, what's the cr- what's the punishment? It was a long time ago. Trying to have someone killed. You didn't have them killed. Yeah, it's like trying. It was 16 years, I think. Uh, yeah, 16. I mean, that's a long time, but it's been that long. Let's see her. See her. That's sentence. about right. You didn't do it, but you tried. 16 years of your life. Like, it's like. Let's see her sentence length. 15%. Convicted of- last month. What? Of what? <laughs> well, that's. Uh, no, if it's from an older. Oh. Uh, her conviction upheld when they appealed. It did uphold, and she won't get out until, bless you. Thank you. She won't get out until, oh, it's March, from March 13th, 2019. Uh, she, the conviction upheld, she won't get out until 2032. No. What? So 13 more years. Yeah, How, yeah. When did she go in? Or 12 more years. Um, She went in. I mean, it is dying. I think it was 16 years total, so probably four years ago. That's it. Maybe it was more. I don't know. But I feel like it was way more. Maybe I, uh, anyway. Were there any other serious crimes in? All I remember is the white trash. Were there serious crimes that they actually? Tra- I'm trying to think. I can't see much of like murders or nothing like that. Yeah. Did they ever show up and it was like bad? And there was uh, they they show up and it's bad where people have been shot or stabbed. But they usually show ones where the people are like. It's like in, if it's violent, it's usually that they're insanely okay. The resilience, yeah. of these people with like a gunshot. Uh, that one guy was like shot in his stomach. He was making all kinds of noise, but he was walking around. I mean, like it's it, there's so many like fun. I mean, it's so funny to watch. And Jeff, I think it was Jeff Garland of all people who had like a great fucking joke. Uh, and it was just a piece of the joke, but it was it, it really breaks down like why I watch cops because he was like you know he, he, Garland did a whole joke about uh it was half hour on HBO. I watched it when I was younger. I liked it when I was younger for some reason, but like uh. It was about, as you get old, they say when you're a kid, you have like 200 laughs a day or something yeah. like that. It's like some crazy number of laughs they go. Because when you're a kid, everything's funny. Like, you know, poop. Yeah. Poop again. Just as funny. <laughs> yeah. And he was like going through the whole thing. He goes, and then you get older. He's like, then life hits you this way. He basically goes through all sections of life that you get down to an adult 
uh, laughs like one and a half times a day. <laughs> and he goes, they're not even good laughs, you know? It's just like, uh, <laughs> hey, I got a, I got a alphabet of speaking ticket. Ha ha. He goes, I watch cops. Like, oh, that's not me. Whoa. And it's really it's like it's something about that. You just watch and I go, right, I'm right. always, a lot of the episode, even if it's like a boring uh, segment, there's always a thing where it's like, damn, dude, this guy just lives like this all day long. His existence is waking up and sitting on a, two oil cans with a box on it that he sits on and not even looking he for just a job. drinks beer, doesn't yeah. care. Just his TV sucks. It's like it's not even like he has like some great entertainment. And he's just like, I'm just a bum like that. It goes, he just like the shittiest there. He's watching three channels on black and white hammered 24 7 you're like god damn, damn. It's like, why Bleak. are these guys and they seem like they don't want to die <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, why don't they want what to is die your existence? They're just like yeah. some weird lady sitting there with them too you know what i mean like, see, they've always got girlfriends yeah or wives whatever they got a lady misery loves company dude that's that makes more sense to me now when i was they when i was younger that, i thought like, I'm, man, I'm upset yeah. i want you upset it's more than that it's more like misery goes like i'm miserable it goes well, that's like, I guess we could at least fuck or like, you know, when we but, get bored. But and also, a lot of them are not fat. They have that late career Amy Winehouse, 26-year-old Amy Winehouse body where yeah. it's like, it's just like empty. Yeah, baggy. Yeah. You're, but you're baggy. not fat. You're not fat. You're baggy. Baggy, yeah. Like you just like got shot at like light speed or something or something. And you're just like, what? you're just drooping a little bit. Yeah. I always thought it was interesting, the cameraman that keeping up with them in like full chases. Uh yeah, uh, doing shows. You got Stress Factory outdoor shows. Wait, wait, what? Stress Factory said they're gonna be doing out some outside shows. Is that real? Yeah. When are you doing them? Oh, I'm. I, I mean, he just asked me if I would uh, want to do one. Outdoor shows. They can't do indoor shows there in their courtyard. Capacity? They have the courtyard out there though. Courtyard's kind of cool though, actually. It's enclosed in terms of it's, outdoor. Uh, it's enclosed. Oh, oh, it's enclosed from the street. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's probably not a bad, terrible idea. I have to wrap this up because I have to go to do skanks. Oh shit! Well, you gotta give me some highlights of. Well, I was asking sure. about the cameraman, but like, you gotta give me some highlights of. Oh, your, that was a, a, a guy. A guy from Cops. This is you could find this off the show, but the thing from Cops, the camera guy who gets shot at Wendy's, crazy, dies. It's pretty graphic. The online, you could find the footage of it. Yeah, camera guy gets shot. Really? Just goes down. I don't think it's the first time a camera guy's ever been shot. On the show? Did the cops ever get shot? Um, did the cops have the... Um, maybe. Has a cop ever been punched out or anything? Like, on um, the cops? On the show? No, but I mean, you've seen them. They eat shit, man, sometimes. Especially when they have to do something as athletic as a person they're chasing. It's always like One guy, I mean, fucking... They saw this guy basically jump off a bridge. Yeah. And like he just did it also. And like he was just, un he was out. He's like, like they had to wake him up. The they cop? Really, yeah, the cop was knocked unconscious from the fall. Like his <laughs> head hit or his neck snapped or something. Because he was yeah. fine ultimately, but they had to like, the, the rest of the thing was like, did they get the guy? He goes, yeah, they got him over on uh, Melrose over there. He's fine. But like, you know, they but don't, don't worry about it, dude. You're good. He's like, I thought I could do it. Because <laughs> like, nah, the perps fine. always get away. Like they, they don't just like get over a fence. They like scale it perfectly. Yeah. And then the cops like, ah, I've got a fucking tool belt on. But when they do it, man, when those cops do it. Damn, it's impressive. Yeah. Damn, it's impressive. I mean, my one of my all time highlights is the yeah. uh, is the Mexican tranny. Is uh, <laughs> see if I could if I could even find the the Mexican trans cops because i mean it's great audio <laughs> yeah yeah i mean this is the winner see trans I love your fucking panache for it yeah it's You're almost like god dude you gotta see this one i just saw i, I just, didn't know it was it was still on for probably 10 to 12 years until you were like hey come over i'm watching just pure like, entertainment old ones it's pure pure entertainment let's see mexican Trans. I'm gonna Google it. By the way, Big J is gonna be in Philadelphia, Providence, and West Palm. All coming up. Everybody, go to BigJComedy.com. See my new whiteboard. Do, 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 boop. Comedian states. Doop. Doop. Boop. Um. Damn it. What? You can't. You have this YouTube clip. There is, but I'm trying to like. Uh... Why? What's good about it? Just the way she, it's like she's awful looking. Everything about it is, 
is awful looking. It's the makeup, the whole thing. And it's just like, the cop's just like, uh, you seem like you're a little uh, underdressed for saying what this thing you're going to. And it's like, ew, shut up. <laughs> it's, just, it's so ugly, but trying to be like hot chick, it's just one of the best things ever. Hey, what did you think of Reno 911? I never really watched it. I heard it was funny. I always heard it was really funny. It's a funny. knockoff of that, right? Uh, it is like the parody of Cops. Yeah. That's Not knockoff. Yeah. Parody. Cops cancel by pants. The first thing you look up. You're so mad about bitch. it. Cops and live PD pulled. <sighs> My friends told me uh, they're like, they're like, cops is canceled. Gone with the wind is gone. I was like, well, as long as Dukes of Hazard is still on, I'll be okay. <laughs> they're like, all right, I got bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, the paint job was wrong. Mexican, I'll try one more time. What are the highlights? Give me another highlight of cops while you look it up. Mm. It just says going off air. It keeps hurting me. <laughs> keeps on hurting me. <laughs> uh, cops, let me think. I mean, there's so many. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so yeah, flooded it's with it. It's hard to think of them. Fucking... Uh, anytime somebody gets uh, clearly arrested for prostitution and trying to say, that's not what it is, it's particularly a when job. they have the prostitutes. Uh, like they pull the prostitute aside, and when the prostitute admits it, sometimes <laughs> like the prostitute will be like, "Yeah, you know me, officer, or whatever." Like, "Yeah, I was, I'm just trying, you know, I ain't doing drugs no more. Though. I'm just trying to get off the street." And they're just talking to some fucking sad old man, and I go, "Why'd you pick up hookers? Hooker? Like, no, <laughs> no, no. That's my, uh, that's my." It's my sister's kid. <laughs> hooker, what? He's just like trying to give some kind of thing. Hook. And the hooker's just totally like, yeah, you know, I'll go in tonight. I could probably, I could bond out tonight, right? Is that cool? And the cop's like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, you know the Dolores, lingo. that's fine. You can bail out tonight. Uh, yeah, then the guy's over there like, it, she says she was a hooker and I agreed to that? No, no, that's just. <laughs> that cannot be right. That's, and then anytime they have the cops pose as, I feel bad when the cops, for whatever reason, I feel bad when the cops pose as John and get the hookers oh uh, really i do yeah feel hookers it seems like a victimless crime it is a victimless crime and they're just like they're such, the victims they're, they're such sad individuals like they're not even they're not even like i'm saying they wouldn't but in that crime they're not even like robbing a place or stealing someone's goods they're like i'll put anyone's cock in my mouth for just <laughs> enough money to feel good for a little bit and you're just like damn man that hurting damn it just sucks what's yeah, the you issue feel you don't pay taxes what's your issue but when they catch johns does make me laugh sometimes you feel bad for those guys too but when it's a guy who's just like they just want to get laid when it's a guy who's like a fucking clearly like a sex addict like almost normal looking guy doing it even with like a like a scrubby looking prostitute you feel bad yeah, yeah. It's like, that's I, mean, what you're fucking- I mean, you don't feel bad because you're like, that guy's like a fucking goofy sex addict kind of guy. But but like, when it's a guy where you're like, this is the only way this dude gets laid. It look, it makes for a thing. I think pedophiles. You could argue for chemical castration that I might get behind for uh, for pedophiles and stuff. But sometimes on those pedophile bust things, yeah. there is at least a sliver of me. Put him to the fullest extent of the law. Put him away. I'm not yeah, arguing yeah. that. They're just. I would. I'd be lying if I said there's not some part of me just goes like, dude, this guy's just all fucked in the head. He's just. He figures maybe his uh, adulthood is gonna what get him over on a young girl. It's like maybe all he could have like an advantage is like being older than the girl. So he goes with like a. He's a, not passing up Megan Fox to go out with fucking a right, twelve year old. Right. Right. And the thing is like, but there's also guys that, that do do that. But just like even on the the. Those, those predator catcher things you're just like what a great show sad. that was you're like what a fucking sad sack fuck this guy is you know what i mean like, well they also they just caught the disease it's almost like i feel uh, compassionate on, on that level of like yeah it's awful what you're doing but like you didn't choose to do this you're just like yeah, you, you caught you, that yeah you couldn't be i know like, guys who like fat chicks they they only like yeah, ch- yeah. chunky chicks softig yeah. that's what they caught black lives matter dude black lives matter <laughs> you know what was the worst about cops it was left, you know, unsettled and then we can go after that but like um, it wasn't written by a screenwriter so there's no resolutions yes it just they is. go off in the car yeah it just is every now and again if it got too wild they'd bring you back to the station but it was rare there were some seasons where they would do that it looks like they'd go back and take you in the station and a little like bit process more. You. yeah it's so funny I even know like it's a three segment show yeah uh and it's the first, yeah, first, second, and then the second, 
Uh, there's always, I mean, not three, there's, there's generally, there's exceptions, but generally it's three different segments. The last segment or middle one broken up over a commercial. Rarely. No, or always. always. There's really? All, one, one thing where they stick is with the always case. broken up. The last one usually is broken up where they come back. But the comeback, for, you can almost turn it off after that last commercial. They're going to come back to the whole, like, we learned our lesson today, we're not going to do this. You know, the pandering, like... Uh, Fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the company goes, maybe we learn next time that we'll, yeah, we, well, we won't go talking to hookers like uh, during this time of day. And it's like, yeah, like the humiliation level. Like, <sighs> Knowing the right. cameras. Like, Why did they sign the release? I think they might pay their uh, legal, legal fees. fees. Uh, I never knew that. It was like, why are they on this? Yeah, it might be that. Maybe they even bond people out because the thing is, if you bond people out on yeah. cop. You get that money back when they go back to court. If they run, the odds of that more, you probably do better than you don't. With yeah, the money you make like, from I'm cops, that like a fucking uh, $10,000 bail guy goes on the lam. You're like, it's fine. The other $10,000 bail guy went, went bucks, to court. We're just 200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> so he was a great actor. Yeah, they went to court. And like, you know, we got our money back. <laughs> There's no chance it comes back. It's it's done. That show. Maybe who's yeah, gonna who's gonna fight? Who's for gonna it? speak up to say yeah. it should come back? Gone with the wind is one thing. Now, if somebody, cops is another. If somebody in the black community came forward and was really like Reverend we should, Al Sharpton, we should have these shows because it shines a light on the thing. It's it would have to be a by, secret fan of the show who could co-opt the Black Lives Matter yeah. movement in order to get a show back on. Yeah. But he could do it. But I mean, who the fuck? Want, I mean, if you ask me to stand up in any public square outside of like we're talking to comedy people and fans, yeah. And uh, but you know, I would if you were like, just give only the context, Jay, that you were upset that cops is the TV show is gone and you want it back, <laughs> yeah. and just make an argument for it, just for your love of the show. I'd go, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's not gonna fly right now, man. They're gonna be like, what the fuck do you what do you love them? Like you love what they do? It's like no, it's like the good and the bad, man. It's like sometimes there's pretty good police work. The inconsistency, the inconsistency of the, of the uh, show is also uh, I fucking find interesting too because place to place there's cops to us talk to you goes come on dog why are you lying to me about this man why are you lying to me yo dude why would you run like that dude come on i'm trying to work with you and you're fucking around with me dude sometimes the perps come over and they go dude it's like look i know i got weed put in my pocket but that's it all i got is weed in my pocket dude and like, don't call i'm not your dude they do that too yeah and you're like well which is it <laughs> yeah do you know what I'm saying? It's like then you see that's like well then the guy who uh, is saying or letting you call him dude or calling you is that cop cooler? Than, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like there's got to well, be. Well, that's the thing. Same with the TSA. Like you all have your own rules. Have yeah. consistent across the board rules. I love when they just get overwhelmed. When Ooh. they get overwhelmed and they go, uh, just leave. Oh, this is what I always get, and I end up getting fucked on it sometimes. I go. Uh, they go. What are you going taking out of your bag? I go my laptop because I have a laptop and a PlayStation in there. And he's like, "Well, you just leave, just leave it in your bag." I go, "No, I know, but they say sometimes like take it out, take take the laptops out. Super easy to take out, but if I have two electronics on top of each other in the bag, they they, they always to go. Yeah, my, my Zoom record these. is the same we way. We gotta separate these and put it back through. And I go, okay. I'll separate it. Yeah. yeah, this one. They're like, why are you taking that out? I'm like, because it goes off three out of six times. Yeah, they three just out go, what times. is it? And I go, I get it. So I just take it. I, yeah. I, I pay not for TSA it's pre-check not taser. to not yeah. uh, do this. But part of TSA still says, they keep telling me, if you have two electronics in your bag, take one out. So I just do it. And But when they're running, it goes, just leave it in there, man. It's fine. And I go, okay, but when the lady way up there says gonna, that you're going to make me wait there while you run it through a second time. You're not going to be like, like, my bad, dude. I know I told you. You're just going to go... <sighs> Yeah, you'll be like... He's going to leave like, me hanging. Or, or or even that, even if he goes to help you, he goes, nah, yo, whatever. He's fine. Like, it's not like, it's like, sorry, trouble. it's just like, a, he's just like, a, all right, dude. All right, you should have took it out, I guess. <sighs> Fuck Revolution! <face. laughs> the TSA, I'll tell you what, I'm curious to see that interaction I'm having in a couple of days. That's been a while since I had that one. I wonder if they're going to be like, thank you so much for just being here and, and, and I wonder. letting us have a job. By the way, they didn't get let down. The, the 16,000 TSA members or whatever, they're supposed to be like 2,000. They're all still just hired. Just no one's coming through the airport. They're not yeah. like, hey, we don't need you. Snow is flying, so yeah. we're, we're furloughing a lot of you. Just shifts. No, just still throwing them money. Yep. Jay. <laughs> Thank you for being the second guest to fucking first one in three months oh, in yeah, the dude. studio. This place, let me tell you, this place is great, dude. I'm, it's I'm, cool, I'm, right? exci I'm excited for you, man. Just like the whole, it's perfect. Yeah. 
so this was one of the dreams was to do that but before all this shit happened uh it's to like leave the stand at like twelve thirty drinking and be like, let's come here, drink, let's go to the studio, and fucking po- yeah. do some drunk podcast. Absolutely, right? And just keep drinking. I didn't or even think even about not- that thing. And it's so close that so you can. Yeah, it's, it's awesome, right man. on the way home. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea. It's a great place. It'll be a fantastic hang. You get get that TV up. Get that TV up. Yeah, I don't even know where. Maybe Things gonna there, be all there. good. Watch you. Well, no, but no, you can get Netflix. You can yeah, get. I'll do you that. can watch I'll UFC actually. You absolutely could watch UFC. Yeah, I'm thinking about the space, but like goddamn window. Yeah. Thanks for having me, brother. Yeah, I'll walk you over to Skanks. All right. That's the episode, you guys. So, yeah, cops got canceled. Sorry for the mislead. And by sorry, I'm not sorry. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, I'm not going to do serious subjects with fucking Big J. I mean, maybe someday, but I can't imagine. Uh, what'd you guys think? What'd you think of the fucking studio and everything? It's fucking cool, man. Subscribe. Do me a favor and subscribe. Tell some friends about it. Look at this thing. We're going to have some, slowly we're going to like fucking put a bunch of fan art all around this place. One of the first headline gigs me and Joey ever did together in Chicago. Back when agents and managers didn't get in the way of their friends fucking touring together. You know who I'm talking about? My one friend. Um, yeah, we could go and fucking do fun shit. Works both ways. What a fucking cool poster. I, I bought 250 of these for a 450 seat room. Sold 25, made just enough to get my money back for all the posters. The rest made an excellent bonfire. Isn't that cool? Look how cool that poster is. There's a picture of me and Joey from back then. Look how much hair one guy has. Can you see it? Am I hitting it right? <sighs> anyway, that's the episode, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, cops got canceled. The guy doesn't know if he's going to try to sell it again uh, to another network or whatever. I guarantee you, he's not like, let's end it. Anybody with money. That's why when you see like um, Dukes of Hazard or Cosby Show, that was a better example. Like the took down Cosby Show. And as soon as he got acquitted the first time or hung jury, went right back up. Because someone has the rights to that. And that person doesn't want to just lose that money. Ironically, Bill Cosby bought all the rights to um, the Little Rascals. And he said, I'm not selling it. It's racist. I don't want anyone to see it. And he just ate that money. It's a man with morals, man with integrity. Dr. William Cosby. So guys, subscribe. Take yoga class with me. Watch the clips. If you have a fan-made clip, if you have to make something interesting and you want to fucking put it on here, you'll see there's a whole section there. We're going to start loading up fan-made clips. Like, uh, well, you'll see interesting stuff, cartoons, um, of, of stuff we said on the podcast, uh, uh, like fucking shit clipped together. Like this one guy makes it so fucking interesting and funny. Um, uh, if you make something good, I'll throw you a couple bucks, $20, um, for your troubles. You know, if it's a fun thing, you want to do it and we'll feature it on this, on this, uh, on this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash skeptic tank. Subscribe now, tell your friends about it. Ladies and gentlemen. That's it, right? Let Big J know you had a good time. Let all the guests from any one of these podcasts that you like, reach out to them on Instagram, reach out to them on fucking Twitter if you're still on there, and let them know. Do me a favor. Let them know like, hey, I really enjoyed your appearance on whatever. The more you do that, the more people will want to come into this fucking podcast. The more they'll be like, dude, I get a lot of fucking feedback from doing Skeptic Tank. And they'll tell their friends, and then better, more interesting guests will come and do it. You guys fucking be part of it. Be part of it. The Patreon people subscribe and keep me in business to fucking build this studio you guys built this patreon you guys built this so you should be proud um skeptic tank patreon i try to put stuff on there once a week once a week 40 minute or longer fucking podcast usually sometimes like way over an hour um solos but that's it you guys i hope you had a good time i don't think there's anything left to cover Six and Jump, the fan-made stuff, clips, yoga with Ari, with Yogi Ari, and fucking that's it. You guys, it feels great to be back. Hopefully, we're going to do a shitload of these. So for Big J Okerson, wait, how do I say this? That's Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, episode, I want to get these right. I never fucking get these right. That's Ari Shafir, Skeptic Tank, episode 391, Cops. For Big J Okerson, I'm Ari Shafir saying so long. Guys, please subscribe right now and tell some friends to subscribe that we got fucking great fucking shit in here. Subscribe. Just hit subscribe right now so you'll always come back. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the fucking Skeptic Tank Studios. Looking, we'll look back on this in seven years. You know, we all have little bands of fucking with axes and with, with weapons trying to fight off other bands of fucking, you know, people. 
It'll be like Walking Dead, but instead of zombies, it'll just be like all governments will break down because the virus will get worse and worse and worse. We'll look back on this and be like, wow, Ari, way to put your way to put your efforts into something that we will not need at all. What, what a stupid fucking couple months that was while you were holding on to the old ways. But until that happens, come on and join me. That's it, you guys. Thank you for joining the blue. I'm Ari Shafir saying so long. <laughs>